And now for some great conversation. Talking Circles with Chris Carter on Race 22 Radio. Race 22 Radio. Talking Circles with Chris Carter on Race 22 Radio is brought to you by Squeaky Clean Express, mobile vehicle wash and detail service. Big Dog Signs of Greensboro, North Carolina. H&H Auto Repair of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Turn and Burn Hobby and Raceway and Midway Embroidery and more. Both located in the Midway Town Center in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Special thanks to Velocita USA and Smokey Dave's Barbecue located in Roxboro, North Carolina. We don't have interviews. We have Rockin' Conversation. And here's your host, Mr. Racing Entertainer himself, Chris Carter. Oh, thank you. Thank you. There's the sound. There we go. Got to push that button right there, Dr. Love, my <laughs> producer. Thank you for what you do, sir. Going to be a... We're going to do something a little different. Uh, for First off, we're, it's Thursday night. Yeah. What are we doing? <laughs> so it's, it's Thursday night. We're having a podcast. We're having a special uh, podcast. It's the last race of the season at Bowman Gray Stadium, of course, this Saturday night. So we talked to the guy to my left here, Justin Mincy. And if you don't know Justin Mincy, he is a... Uh, I call him super status statistician. statistician. <laughs> y'all know what the stat hell I'm, y'all know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> we can't say stat boy because that's Elgin Trailer, and we can say yep. stat man. How's stat that? Stat man, super yeah. stat man, Justin Mincy, right here beside stat me. man Mincy. That's a cool. Now that has hey. flow, stat man Mincy. So yep. we're we're glad that he is on tonight. I am so. absolutely thrilled and honored to have for uh, our, Justin here in in studio for our Bowman Gray special. Uh, appreciate all y'all being watching live, however you're doing that. So uh, real quick, we want to make this announcement, and we'll say it throughout the show, but uh talked to my buddy Tiffany at Tea Time, and September the 6th, we will have the Bowman Gray Season Roundup at Tea Time once again. So we're going to have that yeah. there. Uh, and I talked to your boy Matthew Dillner this morning. Yep. And Matthew has already said that he's going to come and be a part of oh, it. That so uh, he did. He did That's say it. He wonderful. said he's going on vacation or something, but made it to where <laughs> it's on yeah. September the sixth that he can be a part. This will be the Tuesday after the Smart Race at the track I announced at Carteret County Carteret Speedway. County, yes. So that this going to be a and Carteret a, Class ninety nine. Yep. Exactly. So we're going to have a big time at Tea Time September the sixth. It's going to be the Bowman Gray season roundup we're gonna have all kind of good guests and i'm gonna reiterate this like the last time that i did this that me and dot done this is nobody has to be invited to be a part of this justin you know (laughs) and and look the last time i screwed up so bad because i've never really i've seen junior snow in passing the number 51 drive snowman in the modified division and I, i uh he came and he drives a long way Yep, and we never gave him airtime. So I hope Justin, I mean Junior, comes back. Yeah, we're gonna have him on there first, and he can have all the time he wants. <laughs> <laughs> and so but anyway, want everybody to know that's gonna be uh, September the sixth at tea time on Heady Drive in Winston Salem. We're gonna have our Bowman Gray season roundup. We're gonna have all kind of good guests. We're gonna have crew chiefs, moms, wives. The champions. Uh, the champions. Yep. We're going to have the season. We'll, the we'll try to get the rookie of the years. We, we're going to. In each division. We're, and no, we're not, Snow. We're not going to try. <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're gonna to extend the olive branch to yeah. let them know. Hey, I must have been out. so busy, worried about, you know, what we had going on there on the, the technical side, yeah. uh, which hopefully I have fixed. Um <laughs> I need to get those speakers from uh, what's his name, by the way. You know, my mind worm. is always, always from worm buzzing. Yeah. Um, what was I talking about? Uh, you was talking about Junior Snow, yes. missing Junior Snow. I've known him since he was in middle school. Cheeseburgers. <laughs> and oh, man, I couldn't believe I didn't see him. If I'd have seen him, I'd have made sure, hey, don't forget, you know, but. I was so But that's focused. on me. That's on uh, me. I talked to him and everything. A, a good so. producer would have had you back. Uh, uh, it's right. okay. We'll get it next time. 
Yep. So real quick, as I always, I want to give a very big you, y'all ready for that? I want y'all to check out what Doc Love's got going on. I'm gonna give a shout out to my sponsors, even though Doc Love starts the show with them and he talks about them, but this would not be possible without these people. So this is Talking Circles with Chris Carter, brought to you by Squeaky Clean Express Mobile Detailing Service. That's Jordan Atkins in Winston Salem. Her phone number is three three six six zero two nine eight three five. Appreciate Jordan. She is the main sponsor for this podcast slash show, whatever we're doing here. So appreciate Jordan and everything she does. What does it say? We wash and wax while you relax. That's right. (laughs) Thank you to Jordan. Also, my very good friends at H&H Auto Repair, Philip, Daniel, and Doug. They're at 3088 Kernersville Road in Winston-Salem. You can reach him at 336-771-0710. Once again, H&H Auto Repair. No job too big, too small. It doesn't matter. Uh, They do great work. They're a family-owned business, been in business for over 20 years. Appreciate everything that they do. And also, we got Midway Embroidery at Moore, Miss Charlene Robertson, Brant Robertson's wife, at the Midway Town Center, Suite 9, at Old 11141, Old U.S. Old US Highway 52, Winston-Salem. There's her fancy machine she got there. Oh, yeah. It Ooh. does a good job. 336-596-0364. Her husband, Turn and Burn Hobby and Raceway, street stop driver in the number 72, Bryant Robertson. Also in the Midway Town Center, Suite 10 and uh, 336 293 7643. Meesmer Ushery Racing and Driver Development. They're also a big part of this show. Kenneth Packer, Lane McKee, all these people uh, that are a part of Meesmer Ushery Racing. Appreciate them and what they do. And my buddy Terry and Miss Jennifer Freeman at Grillville on East Sprague Street in Winston Salem, North Carolina. So appreciate Terry and them. And also, we can't forget about our buddy Smoky Days Barbecue, Mr. David Birch in Roxboro, North Carolina, and also that Brad Smith and the guys at Velocity USA Premium Motorsports Apparel. They're in Lexington, and Doc Love even shared. They had a good post about yes. the dangers of fire and stuff like that. So also, and also, as always, big shout out to my buddy Tiffany Howe at Tea Time Sports and Spirits. They're on Healy Drive and also Birch Street Pub for what they do. Appreciate Miss Tiffany and her input, her helpful advice that she always gives me so here we are we're gonna uh well so what we, we can do a quick roundup justin yep. uh we kind of touched this on the show tuesday night uh there is several scenarios that we can hit on of of who's doing what who can do this who can do what uh and we talked about something earlier before we came on the air yep uh, about our modified division at bowman gray stadium and there's never <clears throat> not never <laughs> this year, we really couldn't, between the three of us, we was trying yep. to think about feathers ruffled yep. in the modified division. And, and we was all sitting there scratching. I can remember the Tim Brown-Jonathan thing earlier in the year, as yep. I said. But, I mean, there's no, there has not been, in my opinion. Now, i got to remember, I announced at a racetrack, so I don't get to see every race <laughs> like you do up in that yeah. booth, okay? So, but th- there hadn't been that many... Nothing major, I don't think. Yes, in the no modified division, you know, there was uh, the Jonathan and um, Tim Brown. Tim, Tim Brown, Brown. Yep. Like I, yep. Um, that and that was kind of brief and just you know done on the PA, but the I would say the biggest conflict you could say was the alleged tire issue, tire gate, you could say, tire with uh, <laughs> with Bert Myers uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, but that's every year. Yes, uh, maybe. I mean that you know that's just like that's a given to me. You know, you know that. Yep. Um, yep. It's and a lot, I try not to read into all that he said, no. she said, and you know, because you got my what my your side, my side, the truth. Exactly. So it's I, I all that yak yak yak. You know, yep. just about. I mean, I I didn't touch this the other night with yep. the the uh, protest and all. I I don't I don't mind controversy. That's one reason why I like doing this show. I don't yep. mind it, but I don't want to ruffle feathers and split hairs with exactly. idiot with idiots <laughs> yep that has no right even having internet access that's right and your idiots are more than welcome to call tonight if the uh, shoe fits lace it yeah. up come on couch racers come on call <laughs> right in. so right, let's hear it. we will have a chance for y'all to call in so all right and and in the in the sportsman division you have the zach Orr. yep and the amber lynn thing yep 
That's been the major of the year. Of yes. yeah, in all divisions, I think. Yeah. Yes, um, pretty much. So some reason after the last article, I think it was in the Winston Salem Journal. And I don't even know who the man is that writes for them, but John I John Dale. I think he does a very good job. He does a great job. I think them. the Winston Salem, I can't stand that newspaper because of the liberal <laughs> views that they have. Yes. But when it comes to that's just me personally. Don't yeah, nobody no, get, get I agree um, with you. Um, but that gum, their sports coverage of Bowman Gray Stadium, I think is very good. It's phenomenal what John Dale has John, done. Yep. He does good. Okay. So with that being said, and it ended up, it's almost like they were quoted as maybe talking to it was like John like had two phones to his ears. Yeah. Hey, okay, Amber, this is what Zach Orr said. <laughs> hey, Amber, this is what Zach Orr said. Uh, uh, Zach, this is what Amber just said. So it, it was like, which that is was, which just wild. damn good reporting, you know? It was so, amazing. Both sides of the story. Right. Yeah. So it's almost like everything's going to be okay this week. Yep. And we're going to drink beer afterwards. <laughs> but it's Bowman Gray. And it's the season finale. But, There's always fireworks. And... Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is full moon weekend. Uh oh, oh Lord! Because heaven. last weekend we had an up close shot on flow racing, and it was not a full moon. There was just a little quarter or a little eighth that was not full. Yeah. So we might there's potential we could have a full moon this weekend, and anytime there's a full moon, there's always some kind of controversy or contact, you could say. Right. Okay. So let me do this real quick. Uh, hold on. Your stepbrother, Cody Hecox, my guys. Oh, Lord. And, and, uh, I could have Peter Pan on here, and Cody Hecox is going to say, those are my guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Cody, appreciate your support, brother. Thank you, sir. And uh, we got Graham Moore, one of my buddies, when a very, very good. I'm going to tell you real quick about Graham Moore down in Mobile, Alabama. I was selling cars, and this he's so good friend of mine. When my daughter passed away, Yep. Graham's the one that was there and had to come for me. Bless his heart, man. He but he was there for me. I love Graham more. Uh Chris can't gonna get you. Cap what? <laughs> I, I think it's supposed to be Chris Carter, Carter, isn't it? Gonna get you. I think you've got Chris ER. Carter gonna get you. Okay. Of course we no, got you, did you see who was P one? I didn't. I can't. I'm on Billy my Graham. Page. Billy Graham. Uh, Billy Graham. Billy Graham. Billy Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Let us bow he, our heads. Uh, yeah. nah, just... He said this is the show he's been waiting for. I cry when you're away. Eric Messer, the tra photographer there. He's in the house. Yes. Appreciate Chris Solomon. You. I want my buddy Chris. Ryan Putnam. Oh, oh Lord. They're... Oh, we forgot about the, the black and pink cars, Junior Snow and uh, John Holland. What'd they do? They had a little scuffle. What was it? Like three, like two or three weeks ago. They had a little scuffle. And uh, I think Junior got out of his car. Yeah, I Junior do remember his car that. And uh, he was just looking or waving or something. Just yeah. chasing, changing uh, or uh, just exchanging some pleasantries, I'm guessing. I don't think uh, Holm is going to get uh, a Christmas card, do you think? <laughs> right. And also, like Eric Metzer just said, JB and John Holloman with John yep. Holloman throwing oh, the key. Yes. I forgot yeah. about that. And I'm wondering, I'm still wondering where I was up in the booth with Matthew, and I think Jacqueline was in the booth that night. I think, I think it was Jacqueline, but you can see them reaching in there, and you're like, you know, as an announcer or as a fan, you're like, he's been in there way too long. What is he doing? <laughs> and then I'm looking at a corner of my eye. I look up at the grandstands. You know, just on the other side of the grandstands, there's the hill mm -hmm. in turn three and right. in turn three and four. And I see this race car driver in a black driving suit come running down the hill like a snowball heading down the hill. And he jumps on the track and assists the the track official trying to put the key back in. And I'm dumbfounded. Like, where did he come from? How did he get over the fence? <laughs> and who was it? He got he got by with one Holloman yes. that night. And uh, that was know, good though. He would never respect. he will never yeah. Mm -hmm. He <laughs> <laughs> he got he count your blessings, young man. Uh of my buddy Jeremy Tilly, who's Tim Brown. You know who he is, son. He's gonna be the twelfth championship. Mm, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll talk about that later. All right, Steve Newsom. Hello, Steve Newsom, Justin good Owens, buddy. Graham Moore. Yeah, we're talking buddy. about music. Steve uh, Newsom is a fantastic musician. Yes, so thank you for watching, Steve. And Steve used to be a street stock racer yep. too. Had that beautiful uh, Ford Falcon number nine. I yep. think Campbell Music sponsored him. I think it was. Mm -hmm. And oh, that's uh, the car that Matt Cotner later got, and also uh, uh, Susan Kimmel 
they had that car before. Yeah. Steve. What does Steve? What does uh, Steve Newsom play? If it's got, he could play his shoe. Yes. He is very, very talented. He, my kind of guy. You see, like Bo Diddley had the uh, like the lunchbox with strings attached. Yeah. Like Steve could do something Steve like that. Could do I'm that. Sure. Yes. Very, very talented. Uh, Mr. Billy's uh, kind of stirring the pot here. Uh -oh. Let me read a quote here. For okay, Mr. he Billy must Gray. be on race 22. I can't see Billy's. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, says, I'm pulling for Brandon, but the shoe is on the other foot this year. Um, <laughs> and Bert could end his chances after last year's race. Well, that's right. There's a lot of scenarios within the scenario. Yep. Um, Bert doesn't have the pressure of winning races like Tim does. Tim wants to win a, win a race. Yep. I've knowing Tim, that is the most important thing right now. Is he said it. He said it on the yeah, podcast. Yeah. When was it? Tea we time. had him on the phone. Yep. He he yep. said and I can read his his even though I you know I, I know I'm odd but I could see and feel his body language yes. in his when he was talking with us. Um, if he does if he don't win a race and wins the championship, he's not going to be happy. He's not, and and that's the racer in him, you know. And that's I, he still got that that fire and that drive. Yep. So some people look at it negatively, and I think you're looking at it wrong. Exactly. But I think it's still awesome after all these years to still have that drive that fire like that because winning races if you win races championships will come it, yes. it's not the other way championships will come if you don't win races that's right so anyway I mean, you gotta look at it positive so i think you know with tim one up on bert bert yep. don't have that pressure of winning a race yep he's going to focus on winning a championship i do not think he's going to do anything to brand it no but it all comes down to qualifying because the field is set straight up from qualifying no redraw no invert no nothing see and that's thank god that's a big <laughs> one that's a very big thank one god <laughs> i mean here that's you a are massive deal how would it be like a, i just broke the track record but i'm starting p12 uh where's the track record? <laughs> the hell <laughs> the the records will show you did get the pole but and it's not gonna pole. show you started and on the front row john dale is not gonna say you started on right. the pole and it went to the journal he's gonna say you start 12. and you get the uh, pole money yeah so, All so. right, real quick, guys. Jason Rowell is watching and said, "Let's go, Brandon." Cool. Uh, Doc, right. remember Jason Rowell brought he's Colfax Toe and sponsors yeah. uh, Zach Brewer. Yep. Yeah, and yeah. He, hey, right. Jason. He brought the uh, he brought the legend. He brought Shane Mule. Is he's yeah. the reason that Shane? Yes, but that's wonderful. Jason's dad passed away yesterday. Oh, oh I did not know that. So man. yeah, so Jason, uh, you know, I've been praying for you and thinking about you, buddy. Yeah, so, man, uh, I'm so sorry. Sorry to hear about so that. Sorry to hear that. Sir. Here he is checking us out tonight. So that's pretty cool. Thank yeah, you for the wonderful. support, Jason. So, but anyway, okay, scenarios. Who's gonna wreck who? You're gonna find out here in just a minute. <laughs> We're gonna lay it all out for you. We're gonna have fun with it. If you get pissed off, you can call and we'll talk about it. We're gonna take a quick break. And we're going to be right back. We're going to let Justin Mincy do what he does and throw some stuff out there that will blow your mind. So we'll be right back. Y'all don't go nowhere. We'll be right back, as I said. Right back. <laughs> this segment is brought to you by H&H &H Auto Repair, located in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. H&H &H Auto Repair is your one-stop auto shop. They're located at 3088 Kernersville Road in Winston-Salem, family owned and operated for over 20 years. There's no job too big or too small. H&H &H Auto is also an official North Carolina inspection station. Whether it's an oil change or an engine swap, go by and see the guys at H&H &H Auto and be sure to tell them OCC sent you. H&H &H Auto Repair, 3088 Kernersville Road, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Race 22 Radio. Race 22 Radio. This is Kale Gale, and you're watching Race 22 Radio. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. That's awesome. Kale, your voice is changing a little bit. No, I like sounded, to you. Bull crap, I sounded just like you. Oh, <laughs> let not play it. Oh. I sounded just like you. just Kale Gale and then why this and the race 22 radio. <laughs> I guess it's the Alabama thing there. Watch your mouth, kid. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, one time I think it was at the snowball derby or something, and I was with JR. Anyway, I've had to sign it. I had Kale's signature down pat to a T. Oh, Lord. I've had to have. 
sign the hero cards for him in his younger <laughs> years. <and then. laughs> Here, I got some extra he signed yesterday. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> All right, so we're going to just jump right into things. Once again, if y'all want to call you, of course, we can see the comments on most of them. I've got, we have several different pages, so we're trying to cover them all. Yep. Uh, Jonathan's page is going. But anyway, regardless, Not Love will occasionally put the phone number for y'all to call in. Y'all want to call in and talk smack. That's what we're here for. Is we want to have a good time with it. And we ruffle some feathers in. We're doing something right. So, But uh, anyway, hey, Jimmy Absher's watching. Yeah. Hey. What's up, brother? Is he still driving the pace car? Buddy. Yep. Man, that dude drives. He is probably the best pace car driver I've ever seen. He he has led the most laps this season in all four divisions. <laughs> Jimmy! <laughs> Jimmy! Where, here you go. Here you go, Jimmy. We're going to give you your award at the awards banquet. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I need to take a ride. I'm, I'm going to jump in with him. Jimmy, I'm going to jump in with you Saturday just so I can wave at everybody like we're at Mardi Gras. <laughs> I, I wanted to do that. Oh, dude, video it. I'm going we'll to play it. I did. Awesome. You know, Jimmy, let me. I'm sure he will, yeah. but it would be cool to ride. Well, there I, just... I think you might have to go upstairs and talk to Lauren Penless because I've wanted to do it, you know, step away from the booth for a second for Matthew and take a ride, but uh, it's hard to do. You want to bet? Ooh. Let's take bets right now that I'm in that pace car. Saturday night. <laughs> Let's see it. Let's see. I, I'll wave at you from the booth. Yeah, I'll text you and say, "Look at me, Daddy." <laughs> All right. So, me. so we've we are right, we're gonna let's just jump jump right into it. Um, the modified division, uh, Justin. We know the scenario pretty much. Uh, yep. that Tim Brown could win his twelfth track championship at Bowman Gray Stadium with yep. no wins. Yes. We talked about earlier off the air. We'll talk about it on the air. Yep. We'll talk about for one second the Smart Modified Tour. Last year, Burt Myers won the Smart Tour yes. with no wins. Yep. Uh, I think right. if Burt was to win a championship at Bowman Gray without any wins, I think he wouldn't be as bothered by it as Tim Brown's going to be no. if that happens. No, he he would not be as mad. But he'll still be irked at the fact that, hey, I won another championship, but where's my freaking race win? Like, I want to win the race. Like, but hey, I still, I won the war. I didn't win the battle, but I won the war. So, hey, it's all right. We still got it, though. We still got that championship at the end. So, oh well. It is what it is. Tim likes wins more than championships, <laughs> from what I understand, though. He does. That's why he's got 94 wins total. All right, so I want you to go back and tell these people. Y'all listen to this. Justin's going to tell you something that's really impressive. Tell them, Justin, when was the last time that Tim Brown did not win a race at Bowling Gray Stadium? Well, for the fans that don't know, Tim Brown has been racing full-time at Bowling Gray Stadium since 1991. And nothing first, but the modified class. Nothing correct? but the yeah. modifieds. Yeah. Because Burt Meyer started in the stadium stocks, then moved up. But Tim started racing in 1991. He has won at least one race per season since 1993. Wow. So Tim Brown's last winless season was the year I was born, 1992. Oh, thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> that. I don't care if you're a fan or not. That that's just that is absolutely that's impressive. So now, now you know why he's pissed off that he yeah, won yeah. a race. I mean, at <laughs> yeah. the end of the day, and even the other week after after the races, we went in the pits. Matthew, myself, and Chris Honeycutt and a couple of buddies, we went down in the pits, and Tim Brown threw his helmet. He threw his helmet I bet. against the ground or the truck or something, and my God. He was not happy that he gave that win away to Burt, who passed him with that outside move in that PSR chassis. You sure it wasn't because Jeremy Tilly went down there and wanted a picture? Right. <laughs> yeah, I think it might be. It might be that. You never know. That, but that is his. That's you're right though. That is that's just that's the type of competitor he is. And it, to me, there's nothing wrong with it. He just wants to win. Yeah. So let's jump into this. Tell them the scenarios for for the scenario or two or three. Yep. Or we'll start down below. We'll start yep. right there at John Boy for Jonathan Brown to win the championship. Yep. In that number twenty two, the white Betty White car. Yep. What does yep. he have to do? Let's see. Jonathan is fourth. Jonathan fourth is fourth in the, in the points, and he is fifty two points back. So, Johnson has to finish three positions ahead of Chris Fleming. 
who is ahead of him by 10 points. But so let, let's let's actually back this up right quick for the fans that may not know this. Let's let's back this up just a little bit. For the fans that may be new to Race 22 Radio or new to Bowman Gray Stadium, especially if you're watching on Flow Racing every week, um, every every race night, with the exception of a few, the points are two positions per night. Well, select events throughout the season, like the fifth race and whatever, but always the last event, the last event is double points. Okay, so for the people that are confused at home, since you made them confused. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's just say twin 50s. Yep. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. Do they? It's only 25 points for the winner and goes down, right? Of each Actually, race. It's, no. So it's, they get the full 50 points? They get 50 points, but here's the deal. It, this is where it gets a little hazy with me, and I do not like it, honestly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to the points counter, but um, it, it don't matter. They, it's, it's, it's odd. The usual 25s, they count one way. They count one way. You, you get a, It's like Olympic style. If you finish first, you finish 11th. They add it up. You get 12. If you're the lowest, you get 50 points. But the twin 50s, what? See, exactly, exactly. What, See, what the hell did this. you just say to me? Look at this, fans. Look at this. Chris just lowered his head because I'm baffled by that, You're too. You're killing me, Smalls. Exactly. You're that don't even me. make sense. Exactly. And then the twin 50s, they do an opposite. You get your average. 50 plus, like, 32 for finishing 10th. They add it up, 82, divided by 2, 41. That's what you get for the night. I know that because it's right here. I've got oh, I'm, I'm not so questioning it's, that. Yeah. It's, I, but it's baffled to me so that, here, how they do that. Okay, so here, now y'all understand. Where did they get this map? <laughs> now y'all understand. When all these people, and I read it all the time, and even the ones that kind of make sense yeah. on Facebook, yep. that, 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 there you go. That's why you're confused. Yep. I mean, that's confusing just listening to it. It is. It is. All right, so let's not chase a rabbit. Nope. Let's go back to the scenario. Jonathan yep. Brown. He has to finish three positions ahead of Chris Lemon. He has to finish 11 positions ahead of Brandon Ward and 12 positions ahead of Tim Brown to win his first modified championship. So and you're telling me there's a chance. There is a chance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So there you go. There, there is a chance. Chris Fleming. Third in the yep. points, am I right? Yes. I'm going off memory. That's pretty good. I'm proud of myself you are for that. Kicking <laughs> earth. You are doing All good. right. So Chris Fleming, third. How many wins does he have? Yep. Two. He has. Three yeah, he started out so three. strong this yep. year. Didn't three. He? Yep. The season has been a tale of two halves. Right. And what's funny is, you know, they take the Fourth of July off. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of funny. It's been like a tale of two seasons. The first half of the season, we had the big three: Chris Fleming, Jason Myers. And Brandon Ward. And now look at the back half of the season. Who's come on strong? The cream rises to the top. Bert and Tim. <laughs> they rise to the top. And look who's at the top of the points now. I'm laughing at Tiffany House. <laughs> oh, Lord. said, I still don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I, right, I'm, it, I, wish we, I wish we had one of those, uh, like at school, one of them marker boards that we yeah, could say. Right. Like a whiteboard. So, yes. Yeah, so yeah like Larry can, McReynolds had his, his yes, board. Yes. yes. Okay, for people like me, for people like Chris Carter and Tiffany Howell, here you go, Barry Smith. Um, okay, so <laughs> I got room back there for it. Yeah. Tiffany said it sounds like hocus pocus to her. <laughs> 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 she means that with all her heart too. I promise. <laughs> so, all right. So, okay. So, it, it, even with Jonathan has a shot. Yep. And, and Chris Fleming has a shot. Yep. So we're even going to go down here to number two with our. Buddy Brandon Ward. Yep. Who really has a shot. Brandon has the Brandon has the easiest of the guys behind him. Absolutely. Brandon is sitting second points, one win, where Tim has nothing. Mm -hmm. And Brandon broke a 36 race winless streak earlier this year. Right. And he's had that one win. That's right. One that's win right. this season. And that's that, that how that leading counts. the points, no wins. Second to points, one, one win. win. And then, then you go back down to Three wins, yep. Four wins, five, five wins with Jonathan. Yeah, four, yep. four wins with Bert. Yep. Then one with Jason, and one with John Holloman. So, so it's unbelievable that Tim is sitting 
in the points lead. So Tiffany with Sarah wins. <laughs> Tiffany is gonna love this. Yep. Okay, so Tiffany, our boy here just told us told me earlier. Yep. If Burke Myers wins Saturday night, yep, and ties Jonathan, yep, with five wins, yep, Burke Myers would get the hard charger, the top gun, top gun, most award. wins in these in because the it's the and, last and race what? of the season. Yep. It, it it's because yeah, he's Tiffany, the last latest one to get it. Right? That's right. That's right. I want to do something like that's, that. That's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, anyway, don't, don't be pulling out nobody. Keep nobody's keys. I, don't be pulling I'm, the keys. I, but I, 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 I don't want to see you in the pits pulling the keys. Now I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but there you go, Tiffany. So I know that'll get her good and riled up on that one. Of course, <laughs> Tiffany, our buddy. September the sixth. If you missed it earlier today, September the sixth, we're gonna have our season preview at Tiffany's at tea time. So that's going to be September the 6th, the Tuesday live after the action. live at tea time. It's always went well. It's going to be good. Thank you, Tiffany, for what you do. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Eric Messer said Tiffany is about to explode. <laughs> yes, that's what I said. Exactly. <laughs> we'll hear that explosion from Bernard. the studio. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Tiffany said they're going to rock paper scissor it out <laughs> <laughs> she is crazy <laughs> well well tiffany thing is uh you you'll be able to wrangle jonathan to do that but you're gonna have a hard time getting burt myers wrangled in to do rock paper scissors with johnson <laughs> they're all right they, yeah, they are all right so yeah brandon ward again has to do what brandon ward has to finish only three positions ahead of Tim Brown to win his first championship. And that's that's not hard to do. When that's had, not very hard. I know this is kind of a generic question, but I uh, has anybody won the last race of the season to win the championship, Justin? Oh yes. modifieds? Yes, basically uh basically a walk off scenario. And that happened with uh Burt Myers one year. That happened with Burt Myers, I think it was like um during his five year run mm -hmm. of winning championships. Right. I think it was uh twenty sixteen or twenty seventeen. Bert had a decent he had a decent gap. He had I think it was like twelve or fourteen points back and he finished right ahead of Tim Brown and and he just he got it. And mm -hmm. he got the championship and I mean you it necessarily is you you don't have to win but you can go out there and rub it in their face. And like, hey, I won. I won the race, so. this, that is the most consistency point um, scenario. Yep. Uh, the way they yep. do the points throughout the season is so confusing. Yep. But consistency pays, and that's and that's exactly. why Tim's up there. Yep. That's it. All right. So Brandon has to have how many spots? Three positions. <laughs> Three spots. <laughs> Basically, my mind's. So I'm looking at these comments, and I'm laughing in my head, <laughs> yeah. and. All right, so in Tim Brown, he has to. Tim Brown has to finish third place or better. Or better. So that's, that's that means no matter what the other guys do. Yep, okay. that's right. Okay, so let me throw one at you. Yep. All right, so is is this based on regardless of car count, or is this okay? You, in other words, you what you've done. Yep. Is this based on a twenty mm -hmm. car field, or do you even go by any? number of car field this, this right here is not based off car counts right okay this is based off of what bowman gray uses okay. and that's the 100 point scale the most points you can earn like billy Gregg said it we'll touch on that a little bit later mm -hmm. the most points you can earn in, in the season finale double points is 100 points if you're 102 points back you're not you're not able to so this is based off of the 100 points so the amount of cars within. is irrelevant Nope, it's irrelevant. Okay, in this all case. divisions. Yes, that's, that's a good correct. question. And a that's lot of why are wondering that. Yes, and that's why uh, when I put out the um, scenarios earlier this week, I included John Holloman. Yeah, yeah, he's distant, way down there, ninety-five points back. But it's if you're within one hundred points, you still mathematically have that chance to win the championship. So you're telling me there's a chance? We're gonna hear that a lot tonight. Yeah. Okay. So there, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Christmas. There you, <laughs> there's our. Well, I mean, what could possibly happen crazy for a surprise? Well, a big surprise could be something like 
something like Chris Fleming starting 10th or starting ninth, and he could just bulldoze everybody into the wall. And you're like, whoa, wait, what? What what just happened here? Chris Fleming just pushed everyone into the wall. Like, how's that going to impact the championship now? Like, then it factors in who gets back out on the track. So that could be a big wild moment, or we could see something like payback from last year with Brandon Ward and Burt Myers. That could impact the championship big time. Or we could see some Tim Brown and Jonathan Brown. We could see some retribution. Or we could see John Holloman and Jonathan Brown. A John and John show. We could what? see that. Uh, nope. <laughs> not happening. You're banking on that? Yep. The, that young man has, he knows not, yeah. He knows his place. Yep. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I promise. Yeah. They, it's they all good, good between them. I promise. Oh, yeah. I guarantee it. Uh, something interesting here I want to point out. Uh, our flagman. Randy Smith. Yeah, I saw that. Take Jimmy Absher <laughs> out of the pace car and me out of the flag stand and give us each a car in each division. We'll stir up the points. <laughs> Randy had a lot of fun with you at North Fork Pearl. That was a lot of fun. Good to talk to you again. But uh, I agree. That Jimmy Absher, you need to get back into a race car. You need to get back into race car yes. like come on now we we all love seeing you in that black and white 39 we all loved it that you you made a great show every time you're out there yeah so he can still do it oh i know he can he, he hasn't lost his touch so he could get out there and randy smith uh i haven't seen him drive personally but i believe he could make an interest in too. i think randy could yes all right I randy so. so there you go I know what, Randy. You come to Madhouse at the Beach at Carteret County Speedway October 29th. <laughs> but you can, I'm going to ask Bryant Robertson, let you drive his street stop. Yes. And then we'll get uh, Jimmy Absher. Yep. We'll find him a car. Billy Gray has a car somewhere he can drive. So yeah. we, that would be pretty cool for y'all to come to Carteret County and do do that. Yeah. But our, flag, our there. flagman there is in trouble. We might need Randy to flag for us at Carteret County. Ooh. Uh, we wouldn't do that to him. We want him to come and have a good time. Oh, wait a second. Randy or uh, Jimmy said, as long as car is AC. Well, <laughs> oh, Lord. I, I don't know about that. I think he's getting soft he's, on us. He's spoiled because of that pace car. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. And that Chevy Blazer. Yeah, I get it. All right. So, all right, we're going to move along right now and go. We're going to get to the, the, the sportsman division. And um, who's fifth? Michael Adams? Yes. All right. So, we're going to start with my buddy, Michael Adams, another tea time car. Yep. Um, Michael Adams has to do what to win the championship, Justin Minson? Sadly, Michael had some issues Saturday, and he yeah. could not make the second race. That really hurt his chances. Right. He's 73 points back now. That I was I was hurt when he, when he didn't come out for the second race. I mean, I stopped and talked to him for a minute every Saturday. Good luck. Have some fun. Try to get a win. So it, that sucks, but as it stands right now, Michael is 73 points behind, and he has two wins. But get this. Get this, Chris and Doc. The person that's leading the top gun is not in points contention. Who's that? Amber Lynn. So we have drivers with two wins and three wins, and that's eligible for a championship. So it could get a lot complicated with the tiebreaker situation. Now, I would I – I, I, I don't want – you know, I don't want to stir it, yep, but if liar. she's in contention to uh, concrete that award, I think yep. someone would might have to say something about that. I That's think, right. I think there would be some controversy on the on the track this week. Yes, a lot of it's been in tech and post tech. I yes, with them it'll be. I think it would be uh, on the track again. <laughs> yes, I think so. Let's see. Yeah, Michael has Michael has to finish now. Now Tiffany. Uh, there, here you go for for Michael. Li listen closely. Michael has to finish eight positions ahead of Chase Robertson. He has to finish eleven positions ahead of Zach Clifton. Twelve positions ahead of Justin Taylor, and his car number. Nineteen positions ahead of Tommy Neal to win that elusive first championship that has eluded him since he started back in two thousand eight. Wow. All right. Sorry tough for task. telling your age, Michael. Sorry for telling your age. Tough, tough <laughs> task for my buddy, good friend Michael Adams, and another good Very buddy tough. of mine, 
fourth in the point, 637, is the number 31 of Chase Robertson, who That's did right. join us by phone. He had a birthday Tuesday. Yep. So, yep. Justin, for Chase Robertson to win a championship in the McDowell Heating and Air Sportsman Championship, yep. what does he have to do, my friend? Well, I just want to say this before, that Chase has impressed me. Oh, yeah. This second season. Mm-hmm. The second season, and he has pulled what only one driver has done, and that was Derek Stoltz back in 2008, won five races in his rookie season. Well, Chase wow. in his second season has won three races, mm-hmm. and you, most of y'all knew, y'all know that that is extremely hard to do in the sportsman division. It's it hard, especially this year and last year, especially this yeah. year. I especially, I get it. I get it, but I'm not surprised in the least little bit. I am not. I'm not. <laughs> seriously. I mean that with all my heart. Either. I'm, I am not surprised. Chase is really developing the, a, a good young man, uh, a, a heck of a race car driver. I, I think Chase is one of those drivers. There's not a person on that track. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yep. But there's not a person on that track that can say that Chase drove me dirty. Chase did this. Or what? That, there's not. That Chase is just. He, it's like his dad, Mike Robertson, said. Chase stays in his lane. Yep, he yep. stays in his lane. He he's don't mature get... beyond his years, and he's exactly. got race IQ beyond his years, and he's such a cool, level-headed kid. Exactly, and that's part of the Robertson family. Yeah. Other they than Brian, have... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he must be adopted. <laughs> no hell, no, he ain't. <laughs> yeah, you, you can easily tell that's Mike's brother. You can tell. Yeah, there's no, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's no doubt in that. We'll, we'll talk about that later, but but anyway, that but yeah, Chase. So it's it's a it's let's see, Chase is forty five points behind. Right, yeah, forty five points behind. So that so translates to with three wins. That tr- yes, that translates to just eleven, just over eleven. So Chase has to finish four positions ahead of Zach Clifton. He has to finish five positions. Ahead of Justin Taylor, 12 positions ahead of Tommy Neal to win his first sportsman championship in only his second season, and no one has ever done that. So, possible. possible. It's possible. It, it's very possible. So, especially for someone that keeps their nose clean all right. season. Yeah. It's very and, they do, and also, now they're going to have a 40 lap race. One race for the sportsman is it's That's one right. race, 40 yep. laps. Now, oh, they, it's a cone race, too. That too. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. That's a now, game do they changer. do they redraw? Um, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Wow. They do. See, that's yep. the game changer. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's like it's like a basically they'll I, qualify. I've seen it. Yep. But then they still full field redraw. Yep. Wow, it's pretty much once I, again. I've seen it, I've seen it before. Once. It's you draw and have a crown royal bag. That's pretty yes. much it. And I done told Michael I was drawing for him this this weekend, Michael Adams. Okay. So, but once again, could you imagine? Man, I was fast. I was I'm pole sitter, and then you draw yep. a sixteen. Broken record. <laughs> I cry. Yeah. I would go. Yep. <laughs> I'd yep. be I, so upset. I, I think they do. <laughs> well, that's the difference. That's the difference. I wouldn't cry because I, I told Michael at the the hundred lapper when he when he won. Yeah. Yeah. I walked up to Michael and he's like, "Man, I qualified really good, but man." I, 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 but I told him, I told him, I said, hey, I got to go to the booth, but good luck. Put on a show for us. He gave me that smile that he always he has. He always does, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I put on a show for the flow racing, for uh, the people here and the people at home on flow racing. So for him to get a sponsor plug for flow racing, <laughs> that was so phenomenal of him. Yeah. And he will put on a show. Yeah, he will. He will, no matter Absolutely. what. He's All always right. put on a show. So we're going to go to 652 points for the number 81 of another buddy, Zach Clifton, who yep. has three wins, 30 points out. Justin, yep. tell us the scenario for Zach Clifton to be able to win a championship. Zach Clifton is part of that ultra-famous Clifton family. Oh, but don't get me started about his daddy. <laughs> I love that man. I, yep. te- I'll, I will text Ronnie Clifton, and I love you. I love you too, buddy. And that's it. We'll talk for another month. But, yeah, th- yep. we – we could talk about that for three hours, but yes, for sure. Let's see. Zach has to finish two positions ahead of Justin Taylor and eight positions ahead of Tommy Neal to win his second championship. Mm-hmm. So 
Uh, and that's a, that's a pretty big deal to get two championships. Yeah. What's what what year was his first one? Let's see. Three years ago. Let's see. His championship was um. Was it that? Was it nineteen or twenty? Whoa, twenty fifteen. Fifteen. Wow. It's been that long. Wow. Wow. And and don't worry, Zach. I, we're about the same age, so I can tell your age too. Yeah, he was pretty young then, wasn't he? Very young. Very young. When he when he won that championship, he was 22 years old, nice. 11 months, and 10 days old. And so, that's pretty crazy to believe. That's one of yeah. the youngest ever. Matter of fact, that is the that's the second youngest ever to do it behind Philip Hill, Alfred Hill's son. Right. So we have Donkey Strong. Donkey Strong. Justin yep. Taylor, who called into the show Tuesday night. He's... Yep. Uh, 656 points, 26 out with three wins. Yep. What does he have to do, Justin? And I just have to throw this out there. I'm sorry, Justin, but uh, after the show Tuesday, Justin messaged me Wednesday, and he was asking me what he needs to do. <laughs> Which kind of prompted yep. tonight. <laughs> exactly. So thank you, Justin. Thank you for prompting, pretty much kickstarting this whole event tonight. So thank you for that. Um, Justin has to finish seven only, has to finish seven positions ahead of Tommy Neal to win his second career championship, which, and you, everybody knows his championship was a dominant season back in 2019. Mm -hmm. And he got Very to, dominant. he got, he got to hold the title the next year without racing because That's of right. COVID. That's right. So He's he the raced. longest reign in sportsman champion. So he, he <laughs> actually, yeah. And I mean, actually he is. That's and right. so he would go to 311 and race at the yep. dirt track where I was announcing that, and yep. I'd get to say, and you're reigning, Bowman Gray, <laughs> sportsman champion. People would be looking at me like, what the hell what? is he talking about? What? It was yeah. the truth. What's this guy talking know? about asphalt track for? What? Because they all love Bowman Gray, and they That's know it. right. There'd be That's so right. many dirt people there this Saturday night. And exactly. Yeah, because well, they ain't got nowhere to go. But there you go. <laughs> we, will, we will touch on that later. Maybe. Maybe. I think we should. I, I mean, that's just – anyway. <laughs> all right, so. Tommy Tiger to Tommy Neal, 682 points with two wins. Yep. What does he have to do, my friend? Tommy Neal only needs to finish seventh or better, regardless of Justin, Zach, uh, Chase, or Michael. He just has to finish seventh or better to win his third championship, which would tie him with the inaugural champion back in 1973, Alfred Hill. And... The Greggs, we'll touch on later, with Ricky Gregg, who won three championships during his time. So, and we obviously know Tommy Neal, that car has not been, you could say, fast, like it has been in the past, but that's because of the draws. He's drew all the time in the back, and he always but, constantly uh, comes to the front. That means his car is fast, Justin. It's not that fast. It's fast. It's not that fast because it would reflect on the wins list, right? Well, I mean, but how many other fast cars only have <laughs> no? Wins? I don't know. With the, the short short races when they run when they run twins, uh, and you and you don't pull and you don't draw that well. Yep. I mean, he runs out of time, so I exactly. th I do think he's, his car looks good knifing through the field. Yep. And plus, you get the benefit okay. of the cautions with crashes. You avoid the crashes too. So. Tommy Neal, I, I said this earlier in the year on here, yep. Mr. Outside. Yep. <laughs> he, he ain't skirt. <laughs> we, but here's the thing. Never. We talked Never. about it earlier, uh, Bert, uh, Bert going around Tim on the outside. And, yep. and it, it seems to me, even though when you ask them, they still hate the outside and everything. But the outside, yes. it's almost like the outside is starting to work for some drivers. Yep. Uh, you know what? I think Tom, I have a thought. Yep. I have a What's thought. What's that, Doc? I think everybody is still saying the outside sucks, the outside yeah. stinks, the outside, yep. but they don't want to show their hand. Exactly. Exactly. S meaning, in, in my opinion, meaning if I know my car works better and a yep. lot of people don't, I'm not going to tell everybody. Exactly. It's like playing poker. So do you want to show maybe your hand? some sportsmanship games going on there? I think. My game. What games. do you think, Chris? What do you think? It, you it's think? a possibility, but it's pretty much Tommy Neal. Is not scared to go out there. <laughs> yeah, his car is handling top, bottom, middle of the Dylan uh, Ward, grass. Yeah. Dylan Ward racing has him yeah. strolling. Yep. Uh, and once again, Tommy, man, I've done hot dogs at Tommy's events before. Yep. Tommy is also a good friend. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it, it to me, 
and Michael Adams, when, when I say this, this is what sucks about doing what I do because yeah. I got a lot of good friends. Michael, <laughs> me and Michael Adams is very yeah. close. It, it just looks like, just like with Justin Taylor, very close. Yep. It, it's going to be damn hard people for yep. Tommy Neal not to win that championship. That's correct. Okay. That's, That's correct. my opinion. It don't matter. It's, you know, I'm just a guy with this to be able to tell y'all my yep. opinion. Yep. Do you have a pick? Do you do you agree or disagree with me on this? <laughs> or do you I want to hear your opinion? I mean, there's nothing wrong with, with who do you think will win. Yeah. Um, but I just think it's gonna be hard for those others to for Tommy not to finish seventh or better. Exactly. Uh I probably probably uh, make you a little mad here, but no, you won't know. I, I never ever pick champions or race winners at Bowling Gray. I never do. Uh I want to be impartial. I don't want to show any kind of favoritism towards any person. So I stay neutral and I do not pick anything. I, I would say like this driver's doing good. This driver's running good, but I will not pick a winner or pick a champion. I will never do that. I will. I, will. I, I did it. I did it that one year. I, I did that one year. And Doc might remember for race 22, when I was working with race 22, I did put out an article about that. But yeah. that was unprecedented because I was working with Race Twenty Two. Right. But I never do that. I, I just—I mean, I can sit that. here and speak with my heart, talk with right. my brain, blah 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 blah. <laughs> but yep. and, I, and I'm like you, Chris. I tell them all. I I I, I love them all. Yep. I absolutely love all the drivers, the yep. teams, the families. Yep. You know, the and I want to go back to. Um, I mean, Tim how Brown. You... you know, even if he doesn't win a race. Yep. Tim Brown now, this right here is what is important to Tim Brown. Yep. His family. Look well, at that little absolutely. boy growing up. Oh, absolutely. my gosh. Can't believe Cam. How tall he's yeah. Yep. And uh, look at the little girl. But you're talking up. about awkward situations. Yep. Billy Gregg's one of the first people I met when I came here. Really? He really was. Okay. So. Yeah, look at Tim there. That's pretty cool. Bryant Robertson is another good friend. I work for Bryant. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, so naturally. He, he calls me Chris <laughs> Gregg all the time. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel bad for but, Billy. <laughs> I, 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 so, I mean, and, you know, at the end of the day, everybody does what they do at the racetrack. Yeah. But it, if somebody was on fire and they needed a bucket, there's yep. not a person there that wouldn't pour, pour it on them. Exactly. Uh, exactly. But, so, but back back to right. what we started this. Yep. Is... I want this person to win it, but deep down inside, I know he's not going to win it. Yes, yes. But once again, like all I'm saying. <laughs> like Michael. Like, he might not win it, but there's still a chance, Lloyd. There's still a chance. Yes, absolutely. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> but I just don't. I, I It's going to yeah. be hard. Yep. It's going to be very hard. For him not. for. That's right. Tommy Neal not to finish right. out the better. All right. With that being said, uh, I think it boils down to where the leaders of the points, where they must finish, no matter yes. what the other drivers do. I think yes. that's something that we kind of need to back up and, and go over and make sure folks, so they when they watch and they know what they're watching. You know, yep. Tommy Neal has to finish here no matter yep. what. So if he's not to that spot, then you start looking at the other drivers. Exactly. Does that make sense? Exactly. That makes a lot of sense. You you want to keep you want to keep your eye on Tommy. I'm gonna take notes. You want to keep your eye on time. someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was going to tea time, and you're so excited. You didn't take no damn notes. <laughs> we gonna are we gonna sing tonight, man? Look, me. And, speaking of Michael Adams. Me and him sang one night. Michael's going to meet us over there? Oh, no. He, it's so. in Yakinville. He can't. It's, <laughs> he's saving ours for Saturday night. That's We're going to have a blowout. But anyway. Yep. Uh, here's what we're going to do, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a commercial break. And all of y'all watching and chiming in and everything, y'all y'all want to be comedians. Look, there's a number down there that we've been showing. Y'all be y'all more than welcome to call <laughs> in. And let's have a good time. But, hey, I appreciate all of y'all watching. Gonna take a commercial break. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Justin Mincy Love. I'm Chris Carter. Stay tuned. People can trust me to detail their vehicle because I've been doing it for years. I've worked on stuff from a thousand dollars all the way up to a hundred thousand dollars. But at the end of the day, it you know you still gotta live up to the same standard. I put love and care into every vehicle. 
I just want to make sure my customer's happy because I like getting everything. I mean, every crack, every cranny, anything I can get. I really just want it to be squeaky clean. I know how I want my ride to look like at the end of the day, and I should do the same thing to yours. This is Kyle Bush, and you're watching Race 22 Radio. <laughs> Kyle Rowdy Bush. Yeah, Rowdy Bush. Ah, that's good stuff, brother. All right, so we've got some, and now I went to Jonathan Brown's page. And John Williams, Jonathan. Man, why ain't that? Oh, hold on. We're t I'm taking this call this time because i just seen this. All right, let's try this, y'all. Hold All on. Right. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, I gotta turn everything up. Hello. Hello, bitch. Oh, <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Brian, I am. Oh, my. <laughs> Brian, I've got the phone up to the microphone, and you're calling me a bad word, you <laughs> bastard. I mean, you. Me and you go way back, so we we good with that. Yeah. So what, Brian? Uh, what, what are you doing? I'm sitting here watching my son hit. Uh, it's not really a baseball. He's just bouncing it and hitting it with a baseball bat. <laughs> We're sitting out here chilling. Okay, and what? And that's it. You just wanted to call in. Yeah, I'm sitting here listening, and I, I, I got no scenario on winning no championship or nothing. I just was listening, and I'm gonna take out everybody this week. <laughs> <laughs> Nate this week when I talk to him on the phone and uh, to make sure Billy and uh, wins the championship. <laughs> I don't know if he's gonna pay me, but hey, I'll take what I can that's, get. That's what I'm wondering, Brian. Is is he actually gonna pay you? Hey, hey, they're showing up, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> so, so there, so Brian Wall, there's a chance the throttle may stick or hang on the number twenty two street stop. It's, uh, it's guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it's it, it's already yeah. been a, a hellacious season for brian so yeah it has no, it's, it's the worst season i've had in 17 years yep yep but it is gave up. we're coming back this weekend and we're gonna hey, we're, we're not gonna stop that's wonderful yep. i love to hear that from you man that's yeah. that's the drive of someone that even though you're down you're still going to get back up and still do the best you can and try to go for that win. Yeah. Uh, we had it last week. <laughs> yes. Yes, y'all did. But, you know, it happens. It's bum and gray. We race around football field. And... Yep. Yep, that's that's it. Y'all race around football field. So what can you do in, in that case? Okay, so look, I love you and everything. I'm going to let you go. There's a number down there you can call, and we'll carry on this conversation. Call us, and <laughs> I love you, and I'll see you Saturday if you don't call in. Later, Brian. All right, see you. No, bye. <laughs> I forgot to say this show is rated PG-13 with, a, <laughs> uh, with an R in parentheses. I, I did not, but I guess I should have known. <laughs> more, more like rated M.A. I mean, for mature. <laughs> right out of the gate. Right. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Whoa! Man, I think he jumped the start there. We might need Randy Randy Smith called the start back. <laughs> All <laughs> right, so Brian, Jason though. Southern, you said you weren't going to stop Brian Wall, literally. So <laughs> anyway, so Adam Moore said, "What's up, Justin Mincy? Way early. I don't even know when." Uh, hey, Adam. But I here's hey, what I, here's what I like about this show, like y'all. Tell me, buddy. Let's see. Where did I just see this? Comment? Oh, and that was a great. That was eventful. I don't know if y'all got to watch it on Flow Racing or if you were there Saturday, but Adam, thank you. Thank you very much for providing that skid race content. I missed that, that. That skid race was one of the best skid races I've seen forever with the top three right there together, and Adam was in it. And, like, he, you couldn't even say, oh, this guy was leading because they were battling so freaking much. It was so cool to see Adam up there battling for the win. And a skid race? Yep. Yep, it was so cool to see that. I love watching that skid race and see the throttle control of not even changing the gear. You don't have to change the gear. You just stay in that one gear. You just feather the throttle through the corners, and when you get that car pointed straight on straightaway, gas it up and just get get into that next corner and feather the throttle. 
It's amazing how they do that. I've never got into it. What? Yeah. That, what? It's so cool. I, it's I so haven't. cool. So this is why I love this. Kenny K Dog Shores. Yes, yes. I know Kenny from yep. way back. I'd like to see Tommy's crap blow up the first lap <laughs> <No>. myself. <laughs> That's why we do what we do, and I get wow. it, man. I mean, you know, I like chocolate, you like vanilla. Oh, I understand. He's good stuff. That's, man. He, that's the keep passion digging. of the fans. And then I uh, got my buddy from way down in Mobile, Alabama. He drives a super late model and a pro late model, Dustin Smith. Talking about our old buddy yes. Graham Moore. So you know who Dustin is? Dustin oh Smith? yeah, oh yeah. I mean, well, I know I'm, Dustin. Watch that boy race go karts, but uh. Dustin, thanks for watching, buddy. Appreciate you. Hope Thank all's you. going well down there in Mobile, Alabama. Yes, sir. Down I hope your Mike, racing endeavors is pretty good. He's been doing good. He's got a big race coming up September the 3rd, Labor Day weekend at Mobile Speedway. Ooh. The uh, SRL, I think it is, Ricky Brooks Series. is yes. going to be down there, 12500 to win. Uh, Dustin will definitely be a threat to to be at the and good luck. top of the speed Good luck in that race, that. Dustin. Yep. yep. That's gonna be a big a big deal there. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's good to see the Super. Supers hadn't raced at Mobile Speedway, if I'm not mistaken, since twenty eighteen, probably. Wow. It's been that long? Yeah, it's been a long time. Wow. Yeah. But Miss Gina That's is crazy. Doing, she's doing one heck of a job down there at Mobile International Speedway. All right. Yes. So now we have talked about the modifieds. We have talked about the sportsmen. So now we're gonna jump on down to the law offices of John Barrow Street Stock Series point standing scenarios to win yep. a championship. Uh, I've heard, well, you heard what Brian <laughs> Wall just said. <laughs> yes, we did. And then I heard or read that, you know, we might, we don't even have to come to race to win a championship. Yep. And then Billy put yep. on Facebook, we're coming. And I'm like, no yeah. crap, Billy. We know that. <laughs> like, exactly. You can see I, you straight could, through that. Yeah. Yeah. They did a bad job trying to do that one. So you, you're not going to take a race from Billy Gregg. Like, that man gonna, has been the epitome of consistency. He's going to be there. Like, you know he's going to show up. All right, so let me ask you this. Yep. Really, it's between Billy and Nate. Yes. Yes, it, it's been show pretty it. much, it's been a Greg season. Like, Billy Greg, like I said a second ago, he's the epitome of consistency. He has finished in, him and Nate both have finished in the podium pretty much all, all season. season yeah and last weekend was the only time a greg did not finish on the podium and i'll give that credit to matthew dillner who had who gave me that stat actually nice so thank Good you deal. matthew and you look at third place brian sykes greg racing yeah so it's pretty much a greg top three if brian can stay in third that's a different that's a different scenario but nate is Nate has been on fire this season. Mm -hmm. Four wins. Mm -hmm. That's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And Billy, with he's, two wins. he's sitting there with a, a measly two. To, mm -hmm. to his son's uh, four wins. So that, that's why he's needing some help from his good friend Brian Wall. Because <laughs> he can't win another win. <laughs> so Nate has to finish six positions ahead of, uh, ahead of his dad to win a championship. Is that correct? That's correct. Here's here's where the tiebreaker scenario would come into play. Okay, I'm listening. If Nate finishes, if Nate finishes first, if he wins the race, if Billy finishes sixth, that's still that's still right there. Like even if he finishes seventh, it's gonna be tie. It's gonna be tie with uh Billy and Nate. And wait, say that again for me, slow. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yes. If if Nate <laughs> if Nate wins the race, if Nate wins the race, yeah. If Billy finishes seventh, that would be seventy six points. That's so twenty four points. They would tie. So where Nate has more wins on the season, four to two, Nate would win the tiebreaker. If I was a promoter, I'd say, all right, that's it. Y'all tied for points. Line them up. We're gonna have a three lap shootout. There you go. But I'm not there a go. promoter, so that sucks. And, and, and we'll we'll make sure Brian Wall's race car does not touch the track then. <laughs> right, yeah, just, just just two cars, yeah. <laughs> it'll so be it'll be like a showdown. That that's rather interesting to me. That, that it is, but that that's the likelihood of that happening is to me it's very unlikely. It's very unlikely. 
Jimmy Absher, just very good point, Mr. Jimmy. All yep. point leaders are veterans. Yeah, That's there's right. there's no uh Billy's been there since the Vietnam era. I mean it's <laughs> yep. AJ Sanders yep. been there since the Korean War. Yeah. I mean yep. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, Tim Brown's, Brown's been, been there since, since the Gulf War. Yep, yep. <laughs> well, but, <laughs> yeah. So they've all been in wars already. Yeah, so this is nothing absolutely. to them. Right. Okay, so <laughs> that that's where we are with that pretty much. Uh and and I would not be ruminants to say it that Billy just needs to finish sixth or better. Yeah, he just okay. needs to finish six or better. But here's here's the thing, and you touched on it on Tuesday. But Stephen Barrier has the most career championships with three, mm -hmm. and he has the most career wins with twenty five, and Tim McGlamry with twenty two. But if Billy Gregg wins the championship, it will be his fourth championship. He would break the tie mm -hmm. with Stephen Barrier, and he would take sole possession of her first place on the championships list. And that's a pretty big deal. That's a big deal. That's that's phenomenal. <laughs> Hell yeah, it's a big deal. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. That man has been racing over there since like 86 or 87. Yeah. In the blunderbust, the mm -hmm. giant Cadillacs right. and, yeah. and the Chrysler. Big old land yatches. Yes, giant. And I didn't even know that until I did my research. I did not know that. Yeah. But um, you see... He would have his stats in the street stock division would be much higher, but you see, he stepped up to the sportsman and he's beating up on those big dogs, right? So his <laughs> stats would be a lot better, but hey, I mean, Billy, it's still impressive that you've got three championships in that division. So is yeah. he still watching? It's been awful quiet if he is. <laughs> I, I think I heard the cricket in the background, didn't you? <laughs> so, all right. So there's pretty much the scenario in the street stock division. Pretty much. And uh, so now we're going to go to the Q104 Stadium Stock Series point standings. And the scenario yes. is, I guess we're going to stop start down there yep. with our buddy Wyatt Sapp with we have to 666 points, yep. no wins. And what is that? 88 out? Yes, sir. Uh, 88 points back. Wyatt Sapp has been on this show more than once, and yep. Wyatt Sapp is sat right there where you was at and started. A, he talked about our, our little hero, nine-year-old Emma Brooks. Mm -hmm. That's right. Who has That's leukemia. Right. Uh, once again, all y'all watching, I'm sure if you've watched before, you've heard us talk about this. Uh, Emma has leukemia, as I just said, nine years old, and we've done something at tea time already for her, raised right at. What was it? Three thousand dollars to work. Yeah, three thousand yeah. dollars. That's right. Uh, and so when we do the tea time thing again, once again we will have another helmet to try to raise as much money as we can. We're also putting together my at the Mike Brown the Brown Compound. We're putting together a big fundraiser for this family. So yep. uh, that's Emma's Army. Go check it out on Facebook. Remember the family in your prayers. If anything, go like their page. Just let them know you're thinking about them or whatever. Yep. So y'all remember that we will. There's a little picture that he just put up a little Emma right there. She's had some yep. chemo. <clears throat> excuse me. She had chemo and stuff done last week. Had some issues with that. But man, she's such a fighter and just here she her, is. Here's the recent there picture. She is, there a little she precious is. sweetheart right Breath, there. Bless her heart. So uh, y'all y'all keep Emma Brooks nine years old in your prayer. So therefore, she's a fighter. I can't talk about Wyatt because he's the one that got yes. all this started. I just grabbed a kid's coattail and run with it. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> thank so, you, Wyatt. Thank yes, you very much. Good kid. Me, his grandfather, Doug Thompson, works at H&H oh, Auto. look at that picture of her. Yeah. 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 She's so sweet. Yeah. We're, uh, we're on a little bit of delay. That's why you see me looking over there. Don, yeah. Like, look at that camera. <laughs> I'm looking over there. See, actually. And then I look over here, and I was like, well, hell, I just seen that it, picture over seen there. It. It's really good. You know, I'm a little slow sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Wyatt Sapp. Back to business, guys. We gotta be yep. serious, man. We can't be serious. Are you crap. serious? Hell no, I <laughs> no, you're <serious>. not. <laughs> <laughs> this this is about that's having problem. Fun. That's what's the problem with the world. Everybody takes everything so serious. I like the exactly. ones that say Chris Carter shouldn't have said that. He hurt my feelings. That's what that middle finger goes. I'm just kidding. I'm not like that. All right, so Wyatt Bird season Sapp, coming into play there. Wyatt Sap, six hundred sixty six points, no wins. Yep. What has to happen? Yep. Well, I got to say this, same with Chase. Same with Chase uh, a few minutes ago. Youngest Wyatt, winner. That's right. Youngest that's winner, right. yeah. Um, Wyatt, you've had a great season. I mean, really, I'm looking at your results mm -hmm. right now from throughout the season, and Wyatt, you've impressed me. 
I remember when you first started at Caraway, and I think it was the old Sanders Sanders car. Yes, it was. It was. A, I think it was the old blue, mm -hmm. just a blue car with a yellow number forty six. I think him and his dad come down there, and how he has progressed, and how he's ran this season, and being so good. Like, let's see. Let, let's rattle this off right quick. Fifth, sixth. Seventh, fourth. He's been so ninth, close to six, a victory. Six, 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 third, third, six, seven, five. That very, is that's very crazy. Good. That is crazy so, for a guy that's been racing there only his second season. So our buddy Worm. Uh oh. He says, "What does Wyatt have to do to secure third? Pretty much finish in the top five, or what? how would that yes. work? Right? He needs yep. to finish in the that's top it. five. That's it. Just finish. In the top just finish. Five. So um, you go for top that five. One. Because Brandon Crotz, I hate that Brandon had problems. I hate that Brandon blew his motor, I think, after the 50 lapper. And he's like, ah, I'm done. Aww. But, hey, that's when the L-Town mob, shout out to the mob with Sean Hayes and Blake Walker. They, they let him borrow the car. That's that was so gracious of them. Mm -hmm. and then, Absolutely. And then the Neal family pitching in. Mm -hmm. You're not done. You're not done this season. They won't let, going they to, wouldn't let him quit. That's right. So so shout out to Brandon. I I cannot mention just this top three because Brandon has such good momentum throughout the season. It was so sad to see that see it cut short during the 50 lapper or after the 50 lapper. But yes, pretty much Wyatt just has finished top five and he'll lock into third place. And let's see, Wyatt has to finish. 17 positions ahead of Brandon Brindle and 23 positions ahead of AJ Sanders to not only win his first stadium stock championship, but become the youngest, youngest to do it championship yeah. winner at 19 years old. And there's not been too many teenagers to win a championship at Bowman Gray. You want to take a guess at the only one that's done it at, at a very young age? I mentioned his name earlier. Burt Myers. Not Bert. Tim Brown. Not Tim. You're going to be baffled. Alfred Hill in the old. Well, that was before my time. <laughs> that was, that was... Alfred Hill. Alfred Hill in the number 70 Chevelle. Number 70 Chevelle. Beautiful. In that is an awesome division. stat. In the my hobby goodness. division. <laughs> and you blow my, me my away good... with what you <laughs> I know. How I awesome that. is that? And my good buddy, uh, James Stewart. <laughs> Thank you very much, James, for helping me kickstart my career with the, the stats. James has a phenomenal picture of that number 70 car from way back in the day. Yeah. So shout out to that with, with James. So White would be 19 years old to win the championship. That'd be awesome. That'd that be would so be good remarkable for that kid. Absolutely. And once again, I wish you would, but it's, yep. the, it's that right there, 17 positions is, yep. is, is ah, that's going to be tough. That's, and that's just the facts. Whether, now, now, I don't think we. I asked this for the street stocks. Yes. Is it a, a, a cone race for them? No. No. Nope. It's nope. just the sportsmen and, and the, the modifieds. Okay. Because they're extra distance. So the street stocks, do they draw? Same, same, draw out yeah. of the hat, pretty much. So that's still. Same with stadium stocks. Still the wild card. Exactly. Is the draw. Exactly. So it's you, not out of the realm. It's, it's not. It's not it's out not. of the realm, but it's not likely. I right. mean, that's yes. the facts. I mean, as much as I love Wyatt, it's not out of the realm. Yep. Uh, but it's some some of these drivers right here, AJ we're talking get a about, bad call, get uh, a, a, a draw. Yep. Get caught up and and yep. You know, Wyatt have a, a good draw. That's very that's possible, it. but not once again, not likely. So, yes. I mean, it's it's AJ is. A great article. I think it was on NASCAR.com. Yeah. yeah, I shared today. it on Race 22. Yeah, that's why I was saying yes, that. Yeah, I read right. the whole thing. Yeah, and and that's why they write these articles about yep. AJ Sanders is because if there's anybody that can have a bad draw, yep, and get through the field <laughs> right. methodically, yes. it's AJ yes. Sanders, and he's done it. And yeah. I love the he scenarios. Has done it. Yes, and we can right. I love the scenarios. I yep. love that we can say, okay, well, but yeah, but we're talking about a man that has forty years of racing. Yep, under his belt. A national, national championship. That's what yep, national champion has a chance. He's fourth, right? Just in the national points right now. Yes. So he yes. still logistically has a chance to win another national title. That's correct. So when That's we correct. talk of, about that, and, and Cliff Mullins just said it best. And and yep. you know what? 
If Wyatt got to win at the end of the season and not win a championship, I do backwards cartwheels. That's that's pretty much like a championship. That, yeah, that that was. Thank you, Cliff, for saying that because thank you. that's something I meant and should have said earlier. But if Wyatt does get a champ, a win, that that would be awesome. So that's correct. It's uh, we got Brandon Brindle, who is definitely Brandon Lee Brindle. Uh, he's uh, minus twenty out with seven hundred and thirty four yep. points. Brandon's had five wins this season, yep. which is remarkable. Yep. To me, and for any division to get five wins in a season is just, it's kick butt, man. That's, that's yes. just all there is to it. So yes. the scenario, Justin Mincy of Brandon Brennell being able to win a championship in the stadium stock division at Bowman Gray Stadium. And here it is, comes back to the tiebreaker. We always oh, got to refer back to the tiebreaker. Oh, now, we didn't talk about that yet. <laughs> Where'd that come from? That's the kicker. <laughs> That's the kicker. Everyone has to think about this. Yeah. Brandon is 20 points back. Yes, he is. That is very easily doable. You can easily do it. Brandon has to finish six, not five. He has to finish six positions ahead of AJ to win his second consecutive championship, which is hard to do one championship, and he would become the fifth driver to win back-to-back -back championships in the stadium stock division. And AJ's done before. So can Brandon do it? Roll Tide. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more of a go Broncos in the yeah, Mountain West. My buddy back home just put Roll <laughs> Tide. Uh, Brandon Brindle, uh, the first driver. I've said it many times. I entered when I was announcing at Bowman Gray Stadium. Yep. Got to go down and interview him in Victory Lane. Very awesome. So yep. he's, kind he's of a character a, he's in Victory kind of, Lane. He's kind of special person to me yep. because i can always you know 40 years i ain't gonna live 40 more years anyway down the road <laughs> you never know <laughs> i can barely walk now so for, anyway down the road <laughs> down the road i get this i can say hey you know brandon but anyway so yep it, it's very possible for brandon to win a second uh, straight championship yes but all right so aj sanders 754 points with seven freaking wins y'all seven yep. seven yep. wins Seven wins. That's the most wins he's had in his career at Bowling Gray Stadium. In a season. Yep. In a season. Oh, and, fire. And where's that? Where's that? Uh, I thought you had a clip of that goofy <laughs> Dr. Pepper, oh. dude. I can't stand that guy. A little sweet. That Dr. Pepper guy. That's sweet. <laughs> so. Talk to us about AJ Sanders and what he has to do to win this championship. Justin Mincy. Let's see, AJ. Well, what can I say about this man? Well, there, what, just, what can we, I say about this? We pretty much, <laughs> we pretty much covered it. I mean, yeah. because, I mean, what hasn't he done? You know, I mean, he's <laughs> the he's amazing. Yes. And he and look, here's something that's important, guys. AJ Sanders, he races what he can afford and what he enjoys. Yep. He, That's you correct. know, but you could put him in one of them modifieds mm -hmm. and he yep. would and put him in a good car. By golly, he's going to be up there the same way as yep. in the in the stadium stop. Yep. So the man's doing what he loves. It doesn't matter what division. Yep. And he's all he's just about, living life. Yeah. And, having and fun. All about family. Yep. It, it's all about family right. with, with him. So that's right. That's, that's what makes that cool. But and tell us what tell has to this. happen. I'll tell you this. The only thing AJ does not have is the top fives. And he has five more top fives to surpass the man himself, the 61 Volkswagen bug, Charlie Curry. Charlie Curry. Mm -hmm. He has to get five more, 130 career top five finishes. Wow. And get Ooh. this, AJ did not start racing at Bowling Gray till 2005. Wow. So that That's was not that long that ago. Is such a huge, that is such a phenomenal ratio. That is not long, obviously. No. That's not too long. No. So. 05. He raced, I think it was just a couple races in 05. Then yeah, he, he hasn't season. raced the full season every year. Yep. Since then, to either. So. Yep. So, let's see, AJ, what does the man have to do? Where's okay. he, where's he got to finish? AJ has to finish. Does he just have to place. start? No, no. <laughs> it's not that easy. It, it's not that easy. It's not going to be that easy for him like it, like his first championship. AJ just, he has to finish sixth place or better to, to tie Kenny Balst and the man I just alluded to, Charlie Curry, mm -hmm. to win his third stadium stock championship. And that is remarkable. 
Yeah, that's remarkable to even win one championship, and but let alone two. He's not just winning at Bowman Gray. He's he's, he's won winning at everywhere. Florence. Um, oh yeah, Wake County. Wake County. Yes. Um, I almost expect to uh, maybe see him at um, Southern National on yep. Sunday. Yep. So he's really good there. <laughs> Well, well, we got to let's talk about the points first, and then yep. I see the the method that you're want, probably <laughs> wanting to mention. Let's yeah, well, that, I'm on Jonathan's let's, page. But... Let's do that last. Okay. Uh, Don Brooks brings up a good question, but we're going to talk about that last. Okay. Uh, somebody's asking Jesse Barker, "What is the date for Madhouse at the Beach? October the 29th. October yep. 29th. Yep, that is the date for the Madhouse at the Beach. That's going to be a uh, great show. Okay, so AJ. Yep. Has his hands full. Yes, he does. And that's a redraw. He does. Single file restart. Why? Yep. Y'all, why? 15 laps only. That's oh what I was just saying. Only 15 that's, laps. You just took that out. I was just exactly. didn't say, why? Wow. Does people leave yep. before oh. they race? They put on a phenomenal show. Exactly. And they put on one of the best shows. And, and it's only, I mean, we got to hurry up and get home, but it's 15 yeah. laps, uh, you know, and it's getting close to the time limit or whatever. So, but 15 laps is, uh, like, like awfully I said, short. Yeah, it is. Like I said earlier, awfully he short. has the, he's going to have to get up. If he has a bad draw, yep. AJ Sanders is going to have to get up on that wheel and go. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think it's really key. Um, for the folks that can't be there, that are you know they can't watch it on flow. Yep, they still haven't come off the uh, that. Everybody asks, you, is it worth it? Absolutely, it's it worth is. It. I, I'll I'm, tell you I, right I do not get it free. I yep. am a paying customer. Exactly. And I love it. I, I would tell you right now. I've got pictures to prove it. Um, everybody wants to say the modifieds are the best. Modifieds are supreme. The sportsmen, they're the best. Mm, I tend to think otherwise. Because the stadium stocks, they have the closest points battles that's ever come down to. And they have the six of the top nine closest finishes in in stadium history. Wow. And you that do not leave. Volumes. You do not leave right. after the modifieds or after sportsmen. You stay to the end to watch this. It for twelve dollars, you show up you can't beat it. You show up yeah, and watch it. all these. Uh, you can watch up to seven races. The, you know, the Monster right. Truck Night. Yeah. You can watch seven races, a Monster Truck Show, and a Demolition Derby for $12. The people that stay that. for the stadium stock races or people yep. that use the internet uh, properly. Exactly. exactly. They're not the <laughs> couch racers. Real, those are real racers. They're not the couch racers <laughs> that you see on Flow Racing <laughs> and bickering online. Bicker, that ain't bicker. That's pure freaking stupidity. Well, got got keep it nice now. Got to nice. like, Got to do crap. <laughs> I, I'm t- they they get on Facebook and do it. By God, I can talk about them on my podcast. That's right. That's so, right. So I mean, they got that's why I look at You got yours. Yeah, that's I mean, right. And that's your I mean, opinion. And they're that's more than opinion. what I'm giving them. Look right down there. There's I'm giving the them the number. opportunity to call me, so I can let all my listeners hear just how stupid some of them are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I can name one, but I'm not going to. I'm going to keep that person. Tell me the name in my ear. I'll name them. <laughs> no. <laughs> no one, he, one girl. He listen, will never call. One girl. I think her last name was York. Oh, no. She got on there and said something about Zach Orr. Yes. That blew me away. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so I read the comments, read the comments of all the idiots. Yeah. And I get down there. I said, all right, that's it. I'm going to say something. Yep. Uh, which I'm trying to do better. I've said it a hundred times. Then she turned off her comments. <laughs> oh, so I mean, if you're Ooh. gonna, you're gonna be a bear, be a grizzly, and listen to all of them. Exactly, exactly. But, <laughs> you I cannot, crack myself up sometimes. You cannot be like Pooh Bear and say this <laughs> and then stop talking. No, you got to be like the grizzly, like the Kodiak bear. You got to roar and you got to back it up. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I we ain't tell them. Bless their heart. I mean, some people just can't help it, I guess. But yep. we're, look, we're kind of chasing a rabbit. I've done that. It's my fault. I'm sorry. But the stadium stock, you're talking about, it, when I watch the modifieds, Yep. okay, I'm like, man, that's 620 or so horsepower. The racing yep. around a football field. That's yep. just badass. I mean, yep. really. Jet fighters and gymnasium, as <laughs> yeah. Matthew Donner says. <laughs> right. Okay. So and then, grace to God, 600 horsepower. And then you got, here comes a sportsman. You're like. Man, they're bad too, <laughs> dude. I like them yeah. things, you know, because awesome. oh, oh, the, the sportsman, even the street stock. Yep. 
I've said this 52 times on the show. When I'm there, when I get to go and I'm not announcing, yep. I'm right there with those officials and I'll prop my fat ass up there on that turn <laughs> four guardrail. <laughs> and it's awesome. I've seen you a few times. <laughs> and and listen, it's a it's almost like really it's, I'm closer than the flagman. Yep. Okay. Yep. So it it put when I first got that opportunity to go there, yep, to cover things and I put it on my podcast page, but definitely representing race twenty two. Yep. I was amazed when you can be that close and see the accordion act and how everything does. So yep. That's when Mr. Loudmouth himself learned a big lesson <laughs> about getting on the Facebook and running my mouth is because that's right. You, you, you it's hard to explain mm -hmm. what them guys are doing. Somebody's hitting you in the rear. Some you yep. hit, getting hit in the rear, but you hitting the person in front of you, and yep. that person's hitting the person. And it's so amazing to me with that chrome how, horn how these guys do that. Yep. Laugh and, after laugh after laugh. Yes. There's yes. no let up. There's no and, riding. It's and not. It's Jonathan right. Jonathan Brown did that with Randy Butner earlier this season. Yeah. Randy was driving defensively and Jonathan was bumping, tapped him the whole time. But that was phenomenal. To see Randy give him a lesson on defensive driving. That was so cool to see that. That was so cool. Well, Jonathan said he hit him, hit him every other way he possibly could without yep. wrecking him. And, yep. and Butner did do a heck of a job. He did. With yep. car control. And you see and that's, you see later on when Jonathan spun, he didn't get out of his car and go crazy. He walked by, walked by, and gave him a thumbs up. Good sportsmanship. When You mean when Jonathan was coming off a of four and a five? Yep. Done, was it, when the five <laughs> drove over the top of him? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Jonathan yep. was a good sport on that he one. He was yeah. a good sport. But still, all in all, all I'm saying is that <laughs> what them guys do, and I saw about the sports, and then the street stop yep. coming. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. Here we go. This is going to be good. You need a 12-pack for them. Need, I need a 15-pack. Because <laughs> you don't know what they're going to add a Jaeger bomb. <laughs> because you don't know what's going to happen. Yep. And, and, you know, I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm gonna probably eat my words, but I, I, I don't yep. think – I think the street stock division, their last race, and I hope it's a. I want them to get by. Damn it, guys, get twenty laps in. Let us get our twelve. <laughs> get let us get our twelve dollars worth, man. man. Not twelve laps. If any of y'all, if any of y'all feel something, hit your car off a of turn four. It's probably me. <laughs> well, if most of them were in your lane, yeah. bro, they they wouldn't have any issues. That's right. It's uh, they wouldn't. not at all. <laughs> but and then it, and then it goes back once again. What started this whole conversation is the stadium yep. stocks and people leaving before that. Yep. Yeah. I, I'll never, ever, never understand that. And I'm gonna go back to North Wilkesboro, the first race, yes. Tuesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Yes. The you know that first Tuesday when Ryan Newman won the modified race, yep. it was really good. It was amazing. Okay? But the in both nights. The, yep. the mini stock races were amazing. Yeah. They were phenomenal. And seeing Robert Stramiska. Go ahead. Phenomenal. Go ahead, Kyler. You're on the air. Who we got? Hey, Chris, it's Kyler. Kyler Kepley. What's going on, brother man? No, you got the wrong Kyler. It's Staley. Kyler Staley. That's my well, buddy there. Uh, well, he's my buddy too, dang it. I mean, <laughs> you can't tell by his distinct voice. He sounds like his daddy. Well, when we talk on the phone, he talks higher pitch, so I don't know what's <laughs> going on. What are you up to, Kyler Staley? Nothing. I called to ask Justin a question. There you, all right, there you go. He's he's listening. Yes, sir. All right, who's the youngest stadium stock winner? Who's the youngest stadium stock winner? Ever. Yeah. Okay. Ever. Give, okay. give him a dun 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 Yeah, let me give you a little bit of music here. Come on, Jeopardy. Let's see. Where is it? Connor, what are you doing? I just got home. Yep. Get down. Get down. I was up there watching Dad race at Turn and Burn. Oh, oh really? the dirt? Yeah, he got a little modified thing up there. How, was there a what? good? Was there a good? Was there some people there, man? Yeah, there's a bunch of people over there. Sweet. Good. I'm glad to hear That's that. From Ryan. Once again, Kyler Staley on the line. He's uh, Justin Mincy over here looking up a stat for Kyler. Talking about his dad, dad who won in the street stock division last yep. week at one of my sponsors, Turn and Burn Hobby and Raceway. Brent Robertson's put out a dirt track out there and uh that's i'm glad to hear that collar thank you for that report on turn and burn and the good car count with people being there let's see oh, collar yeah. uh i've got your answer right here imagine that let's see i just want to ask you 
Now, I want to put you on the spot. You put me on the spot. I'm put you on the spot. Who do you think is the youngest? Uh, I think it's Luke Smith, ain't it? Ooh. Did he nail it? No. No, he did not. Well, tell us, Chase, Justin. Chase Hunt. Oh. Chase Hunt was the youngest. And this crazy. 15 years old, 8 months, and 28 days. What year? When? 2017. 20, no, it's re- pretty recent. <laughs> I finally found her thinking music, by the way. Okay, right. play it real quick just so we yeah, can take it. There we go. <laughs> My producer's a badass. <laughs> Coming in clutch there. <laughs> he is, seriously. Well, so, Kyler, there you go, man. I, th- I swear I thought it was Luke because we won the same. <laughs> that that Justin will get you every time, brother. <laughs> so what else? You ready for the last race of the season since we got you on here, Kyler? I mean, he- heck, I know another. <laughs> Talk about somebody being happy and doing cartwheels. Kyler, yeah. Staley get, getting a win at the last race of the season. Boy, I guarantee you, you'd be happy, wouldn't you, Kyler? I wouldn't know. I'd probably be like that. I'd be choking up. <laughs> yeah. Well, you had every. Yeah. Re- you have. You have every reason for that to happen if that was to, to happen. But for I mean, sure. it's not out of the question by no means. And nope. you even said on your Facebook page the other day, Collar, that that you've had a up and down season, and yep. then you experienced the the your mom passing away, and that that was a bad deal there, man. But uh, through all the adversity and everything, you still you've had a pretty decent season and not what you was really wanting, Yep. but you, you've had a pretty decent season and, and I'm proud of you. I, that's, that's yep. important for you. I want you to know that I'm very proud of you because even at, I believe, remember one time you was even in the hospital with your diabetes deal, yep. but yeah. at any yeah. time, I'm you, really worried yeah. about you on that. Any time that you've had any type of a setback, this is why I admire you young man. Anytime you've had any type of a setback, Collard, you've you've uh it comes back stronger yeah yeah exactly i don't know who that picture is up there but it's not or who no it's not the, that's blaine curry oh yeah, yeah blaine curry we're talking about uh, yeah that Kyler, 31 Stanley. car that producer sharp <laughs> any i just Very said sharp. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah Collard, that's that's one of the things that i admire about you brother is is that you've had some adversity and you've came through it and yep. uh, i'm proud of you yep let's see thank you all right let me try this i mean one. yeah the season ain't been bad for me no. being 10th in points, missing two races. Yes. With that, one being uh, double points night. Hey, you can move up even more. You never know. Yeah. And I want to say this, I think Chris. I'm Go ahead. 10 points my night. Yep. That's correct. That is correct. Is that the right car? That's it. That's him right there. there Look at that hot yep. ride. <laughs> Mustang. Ford Power. And I want to say... I don't know if this is your highlight of the season, Kyler, but fifth place in the 58, not 50, the 58 lapper. Yeah. That's that's pretty remarkable to finish that high in the 50 lapper. So I've I've been racing since 2017 over there. Yes. And we got the lapper every year. Yep. I finished sixth, my first one, right behind my dad. And this this year's 50 lapper, I finished fifth. And that those are the only two fifty lappers I've ever finished over there, and I've got fifth and sixth. Wow, good deal, man. That's great. And both of them, both of them wasn't even fifty lappers. I think the first one was like sixty nine laps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine that. Yeah, it was the longest fifty lapper ever. I was in the car dying this year. I went <laughs> to grab my water bottle, drop it, and the oh, whole lid come off. Hey, that's when you Ooh, go over there. That's when you come over there where I'm at in turn four and, and say, get, get my water bottle. <laughs> Assistance. Well, see, we were sitting on the back stretch, so there's a red flag. Yep. And me, yep. me, Grayson, Keaton, and Chris House and we was over playing uh, rock, paper, scissors <laughs> on the back stretch. That's right. That, I remember. That yeah. was awesome. Yeah. Uh, my good buddy, Josh, he, he's the one that actually took that video. I was sitting there with them that night, and I'm like, what are they doing? <laughs> I, 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 I touched Josh. I'm like, look at this. Look at this. I'm like, are they playing rock, paper, scissors? I'm like, oh my God, it, this this is the epitome of so cool that during was, the red flag. Like that that rock, was paper, awesome. scissors. Yes. <laughs> that was so cool. Well, Zach, we uh 
wish you the best this weekend, of course. And uh that I'm not, no, no, listen, I'm I'm sitting here reading hey, he's looking at the comments here. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking that, at what your dad good. was talking earlier, uh -oh. so <laughs> and I called you his dad. Hey, that listen to this. Last weekend, this kid won in the uh junior mini cup. And yeah, he, it's uh Colby Garganus, and he's got yeah. a brother, Matthew Garganus. Yes, the street stock. No, that's the junior mini cup. So I yes. went, I went to the second place and I said, Race fans, let's hear it for Matthew Garganus. <laughs> I said, Man, second place finish. Tell us about your night. Well, first off, Chris, my name is Colby and not Matthew. <laughs> So then I say, well, and the announcer is an idiot. So I had to look at the door where their name yeah. is. Jeez. So anyway, Kyler, I know exactly who you are, buddy. I think the world of you, kiddo, and I appreciate you calling in tonight. Thank you, Kyler. Yeah, thank you. I'll see you all Saturday. Yes, you will. Yes, sir. I'll see you in the pits. All right. See you all. All right, buddy. All yes, right, sir. we're going to take a quick break. Don't y'all go nowhere, and we're going to – we're going to do one more thing, the rookie of the year. We're going to let, yeah, we're going to let him tell us about who the rookie of the year in each division could be. And then, and, we're going to, then I'm going to tea time. And, and we will cover um, all scenarios concerning the weather. Well, wait, hold on. Let's get this out of the way right now. <laughs> no, let's do, take a break. Then we come well, back. We'll go to break first. And we'll, break we'll be right back. Y'all don't go nowhere. This segment is brought to you by Turn and Burn Hobby and Raceway, located in the Midway Town Center, just off Old Highway 52 in Suite 10. Turn and Burn Hobby and Raceway is a fully stocked hobby shop and ready to assist you with any make or model of RC cars, trucks, whether you love to race or just like to bash around the yard. Turn and Burn Hobby and Raceway has got you covered. Check out their racing schedule on their Facebook page. Turn and Burn Hobby and Raceway. Come get your race on with us and get your picture taken in Victory Lane, just like the big tracks. Turn and Burn Hobby and Raceway, located in the Midway Town Center, just off Old Highway 52, Suite 10. Well, Matador. Race! 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 Since the last time that I saw your pretty face <laughs> A thousand lives have made me colder And I don't think <laughs> I can <laughs> Lord, right. I don't want to so, know what you're reading <laughs> hold, on, hold on, hold on Actually, he was not reading something Hold on you'll, you'll right. say, mm -hmm. Just stay tuned for a moment Okay, so here is Chris Carter with your forecast for the region <laughs> at Bowman Gray Stadium. We're going to have sunny skies. Nice. In other words, nice. Partly cloudy, as you see right here. Partly cloudy with a high of 83. That's Kale Gill's number, so that's going to be yeah. the high for Saturday. So we're going to have nice, good weather. There is a chance of rain yep. that morning. Last yep. Monday, it was 60% chance. It went down, it went yep. down, it went down. So yep. once again, Chris Carter's forecast for Bowman Gray Stadium. That's the sun with the with the lighting. I don't think we can see it. You should have used a a dark pen. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> y'all be creative and think of a sun that a uh, that a uh, a eight year old drew. <laughs> so that's that's the forecast is going to be for this week. So and the the roving question that everybody <laughs> wants to know. Go ahead, Justin. Answer the question about weather what would happen if it rained out what would happen if it rained out they would use the rain date the following weekend which would be the 27th and it would be it would depend on if they've qualified if they've got the race started that's all different variables but let's just say it like this if they if they did not get qualifying if it pretty much like it did two weeks mm -hmm. in, like yeah. it did two weeks in in may um, two consecutive weekends, it rained out before we even started the program. Right. So if it rained out before qualifying, they'll move the whole event, 150 lapper, 40 lapper, everything, qualifying, they'll move it to the next weekend. And if it rained out after qualifying, they'll just start however. They'll start however and just go with it. So it, what, then what, it gets what, complicated. Whoa, 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 time out. Time out. What do you mean they'll go with it and do they'll just go with the lineup from qualifying and they'll just the week before about it. Yep. In other words, this is how y'all qualified Saturday before the yep. rain hit. 
Here's how yep. we start. You won't redo Starting just like that. You won't redo a whole show. You do not get no do overs on that. Oh, yeah. okay. So just that would it. carry over to yep. the next week. Yeah. Your, okay. Your Absolutely. qualifying okay. time and everything, your starting position will roll over to next week, okay. including the sportsman too. Okay. So, and I did make a post about that on my yep. podcast yep. page because on the show I text Gray Garrison, our promoter. Yep. That's right. And like seven forty five, he answered it. Yeah, I didn't see this, and it was getting kind of late, so. But yep. yes, there's this, there's your, your scenario. We will race the next week, and yep. you told the other part of that. Yep. But here's the deal, people. We it's, 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 we don't even have to worry about that. That is no. something we got to worry about. No. It's, the weather's going to be fine. Yeah. All right. Gonna so good. we're going to start from the bottom, work our way up. We're going to start with our Q104.1 mm. Stadium Stop Division. Who is in the running for Rookie of the Year, Justin Minty? Well, I have to credit this to Dawn Hedrick. She sent really? me yes. She sent me a picture that that she calculated and actually there's only two drivers eligible, but Blaine Curry has taken that rookie of the year uh rookie of the year title. So So he's gonna be it. He's gonna be the well deserving. Stock well deserving. Well deserving. And congratulations to Blaine, um, his dad, Charlie Curry and Greg Butcher Trucking. And Greg Butcher, congratulations mm -hmm. on what will be the 2022 um, Q104.1 Stadium Stock Series uh, Rookie of the Year. Congratulations and, to Blaine. And he will, and it's it's already settled that he will be the overall Rookie of the Year too. So and all yeah, like what Wyatt yep. Sapp was. Yep, last year, just like it. Cool deal. Just like so, it. So congratulations on that too. You'll be the overall and the divisional Rookie of the Year. Cool. So. I, I hate to go back to these comments, but Justin Hoyle, <laughs> Justin, Just, Hoyle. Justin Hoyle, Ray Ray. Uh oh. He done, the only reason he wrote this. He knew I'd get ruffle my feathers. Yeah. Freaking, that's what he does. He, know, he knows how to push your buttons. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Just a bit. Play something Just a better bit. than that. That's what he said when yeah. Three Doors Down was playing. He said that Justin, you know what? me better to say that in public. He must not be a Dale Junior fan. No, he is. He's ruffling my <laughs> feathers, man. He. He's saying that just to ruffle my feathers. Say, play something better than that, because well, he knows there's a relationship with this man, very close, and yeah. so that's one reason. Eat my shorts. That's, yeah. See there, Justin, and that's why he's we got laughing. Bender chiming in there. <clears throat> Where? Who? Bender. John Bender. We're Breakfast Club. Eat my shorts. Oh, you're talking about that. I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking on here for a John Bender comment. Let's see what this well, guy has to say. Well, well, the, um, Tommy Moody post. Isaac Ooh. Harris was the youngest winner last year at 14 years old in stadium stock. Who? Isaac Harris. Isaac is. Uh, did Isaac won this year? He said last year. Last year? Isaac is very young. That could that's kind of um, interesting there. I'm not going to touch on that. That could be a touchy subject. Why is DQ'd? No, he was not DQ'd. Why is it touchy? He was too young. He was not 14. Uh-oh. We done opened up a can work. Anyway, talking about the weather this Saturday <laughs> at Bowman Gray Stadium. And back we're to gonna the move, We're going to move back to our – we're going to go right up to our street stop division. Yep. Possibly rookie <laughs> of the year in our street mm -hmm. stop division. Who has a chance – let me – hold on. Let me guess. Yep. Well, and well, and well. Nate, Come on now. Nate, uh, uh, hold on. Brian Sykes Jr. Yes, he's one of them. And who's the second one? Well, well, and going be, um, uh, it's the grandson. Austin Jones. Correct. I did good. Awesome. Yep. Well, tell him what he wins, Charlie. You win a year supply of Brian Soroni. <laughs> now back to you. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you for that. Let's see. Brian Sykes Jr., he's 10th in points. And Austin Jones, he is 11th. So, right quick with a scenario for that. Let's see. Um, Brian Sykes Jr. is 20 points ahead at 476. He is 20 points ahead of Austin Jones, who's 11th, right behind him with 456. So, that would make, let's see. Well, here I'll throw you a little tiebreaker in a second, but um, Brian Sykes Jr. actually he does not have the tiebreaker in his favor, so he would have to finish six positions ahead of Austin Jones because 
like like we've touched on on this episode, the the tiebreaker goes to the most wins. Mm-hmm. Neither driver has won a race. Okay, so they fall back on your highest finishing position of the season. And Austin Jones a couple weeks ago finished third, and Brian Junior finished fourth. Finish fourth this season back on June 4th. So that would be the tiebreaker goes wow. to Austin Jones. And that's that, a close battle. It's a very close battle. That is battle. definitely something people will keep their eyes on, you know, with Brian Sykes Jr. And they're both a part young the, racers, too. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. That's very, very awesome. It is. I've, that's interesting. I'm intrigued by that, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yes, I'm very intrigued with so it. So that's a grandson of Pee-wee the Jones. five-time champion. Yep, that's correct. Pee Wee Jones. So it's it's pretty cool. Don't to Austin, see Austin work at Childress? I think so. Yeah, I think he does. I think he too. does. Uh, Willie Wall asked the question. I think, uh, I think oh, he the answers, legend in the house. I think he answers his own question. Who is the oldest driver <laughs> to win over overall in any of the four divisions? There you go. You answered your question. <laughs> That's what I thought, <laughs> Mister. You the legend, the Willie there. Wall. And I, I talked to him earlier this season, coming into the pits. I just got off work and I just walked into the pits and there was there was Willie. Uh, yeah, right there when you walk in. Yeah. Right there. And I, I was just badgering him a little bit. I'm like, I want to see that two car come back with Willie Wall. No, no disrespect to West Glasgow, but I want to see Willie Wall one more time. I want to see him race one more time. You and, will. And I think you the will. fans want to see it too. Absolutely. And you will. I'm gonna speak for him. There's no doubt. Blaine Curry has joined us. John Blaine was just talking about. You're going to be rookie of the year. I don't know if how they you just do. I just see you say hello, guys. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, Blaine Curry. Well deserved on the rookie of the year that you are going to win in the stadium stock division. So proud of you, buddy. Congratulations on that, uh, Blaine Curry. You need to call in. Uh, <laughs> that's what people are saying. We can put the phone yep. number. We would love to hear yeah, from come you. On. Uh, I've invited him on this podcast more than once. He knows, Blaine. Yeah. You're always welcome. Hope you'll be there September the sixth for tea time. Yeah, there. But uh, hello to you, Blaine Curry. Thank you for watching, old buddy you, Sean sir. Wells from over there at Carteret County Speedway. Uh oh, this dude's got kahunas bigger than the freaking South African desert. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah, Zach Sean Wells. He yeah, drives, oh he yeah, he, the champ cars. Champ, yes, yes, that dude ain't scared, now, dog. He's <laughs> now. How, how has Sean been doing? Because I know at one point Sean, I think, was the all-time winningest champ car driver there. Because I do have the Carteret records here, too. He is, uh, I believe he does still hold that. Sean can I think correct he does. us if he's yeah, wrong. Yeah, please but, correct us, Sean, please. But I believe he does. And uh, we haven't raced champ carts at, oh, in hardly any this year at Carteret County. Uh, I love them, but gum, they scared the hell out of me. Yes. I know. They, yes. We had them at uh, um, South Boston. Yes. Several, yes. Seven, you know, uh, I guess a couple months ago now. Yeah. Oh my gosh! On that what? big old track, they were flying. They were drafting. What was his name? And um, one guy got upside down, bounced yes. off the wall. And then he's yeah. you know trying to get the cart to go again. <laughs> you know he ain't worried about being hurt. He's I mean, fine. holy crap! The, the adrenaline was rushing. Those guys so. are nuts. And, and so Sean says he's retired. <laughs> Friday yeah. night, I went to dinner with a bunch of those guys. My goodness, uh, there it is. That was yeah. that three was a time, good time. Three time champions consecutively. consecutively. That is and, awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, right quick, Sean. I, I just want to tell you how many I have for you. You can correct me, but um, let's see. Champ cars, champ carts. Uh, Sean, I have you with twelve wins, but how many do you have? That's what I have you with right now. So that that's pretty cool though to be a three time consecutive champion. Oh yeah. No, no matter the division, whether it's mini cup, junior mini cup, legends, right? With, uh, yeah. Was um, what's the name? Brent, uh, Britain. Um, the B1 car. Brenton Irving. Irving, yes. So it doesn't matter what division to be a three-time consecutive champion. That's an amazing deal. Sean Wells is good people. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. All sir. right, so we done said Blaine Curry pretty much is going to be your rookie of the year in our stadium stock division. Yep. It's going to be one hell of a battle between Nate Gregg and Aaron, I mean, uh, Austin <laughs> Jones. Yeah, Austin Look, Jones. Yep. You got to understand, I've had a brain injury. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean, after a traumatic brain injury, things just don't go as like they used to. I mean, I've, man, bless my heart. But anyway, there's the race line. Blaine Curry, if you feel like calling in, man, please do. Yeah, come on. So, come on uh, call, buddy. It's going to be a heck of a battle between uh, Austin Jones and uh, Brian Sykes Jr. in yep. the 
street stock division. So we're going to move right along. And our sports sportsman division, I don't think this is really hard to figure out that no. Riley Neal that's correct. Will be your rookie of the year in yep. the sportsman division at Bowman Gray Stadium Racing. Yep. He has two wins, three wins, two wins, officially two, two. wins. Yep. Unofficially three. <laughs> Unofficially three. <laughs> right. And once again, <laughs> I, I and, and you know, I get it. Yeah. Yep. I love that family to death. I've had yep. Riley on here three or four times. Kevin Neal, yep. Miss Lori. Riley, they support this podcast. I yep. love them. And I just, there's, I get why I get yes. it. I get it. I get it. I get yes. it. So all They're very these, outspoken, all these other conspiracy theorists that come up with this <laughs> horse crap that they come up with. Y'all yep. know who you are. I've called you idiots yep. numerous times. You don't <laughs> need to deserve to have internet access. Yep. If this applies to you, you get the, if it's disconnect a, the Wi-Fi. lace your shoe up is what they say. Yep. If, if this is about you and you think so, lace it up. Yep. I mean, that's all there is to it. So anyway, it's so Riley Neal, Riley Neal. Justin Mincy will be our 2022 yes. Rookie of the Year in the Sportsman Division. Very yep. well deserved. So that's, that's correct. Kick butt two. Congratulations so, to that, Riley. Well deserved. Absolutely. Yes. You, you come out the start of the season with a bang, with a win on I think it was week two. Week two, so, he won. That, that, that's he phenomenal. turned heads quick, didn't he? Very quickly, <laughs> he proved that Walkertown is not a town to mess with. Him and, it, him, and have, him and Derek Stoltz. Yep. Derek, yeah. so you, hey, did y'all see Derek? They couldn't stand it. He just had to stir the pot a little bit. He out yeah. there made that post. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Well, I, I'm sorry to ruffle little feathers myself. I but love ruffle I, feathers. I, well, I, I'm sorry to do this, but Derek, get get back in the car. Get back in the car. I, I, if you want to say this, back it up, my friend. I've known you since 2007 when you and Bobo and Ethan were going at it in the street stock. So I've known you for a little bit, so I can tell you this. Honestly, let's get back in the car in that famous 0-2 and show them that amazing center that center rotation and show them you can lace it up and wear that shoe and win one more championship. Yes, Come Blaine. on, buddy. Yes, Blaine Curry. That number right down there, that 8 one 2 4 7 2, two, three, two, two, two. Yeah. That's 8 one 2 4 race 22 So congratulations to Riley Neal, rookie of yep. the year in our sportsman division. Yep. Um, the modifieds. I'm. You know what? I'm going. I'm trying to think. Is Junior, you know it? Junior Snow. That's correct. Oh, Junior, yeah. Really, Junior Snow. You're correct. You mentioned Man. his name earlier. So, yes, Junior Snow. In the, now, I'll touch what Matthew Dillner said that they, they, they in the beginning of the season they had Danny Bone, Drew Moffitt, and Junior Snow all 51 at the season opener. Yes. So they had to change their numbers. Mm-hmm. And Drew Danny got Bone to, went to 65. No, he, he went to 57 for the season opener. Right. But and then he went to 65, obviously. For the most cause, part. Yeah, that they didn't they didn't like that. So yeah, they renumbered it to 65. But and then uh Junior Snow, he went to 61. And Matthew said it about the Richie Evans reference. Right. He doesn't like that Richie Evans 61. Right. That's that number should be retired. Exactly. In modified racing. Oh, in all of racing, actually. Yes. All right, we got a caller. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Who we got? Is it me? Jermaine. Is it me? <laughs> Is it Jermaine Dupree? I have no idea. you got to introduce me. <laughs> no, I want to apologize because I thought I was talking to – I thought I was just talking to you, Chris Carter, earlier, and <laughs> evidently I said some bad words, and oh. I thought I was just talking to you. No, I actually oh. – no, I put you on – when you called, Brian, I – I had to sell my phone up to the my <laughs> microphone, and then you said, "Hey, ditch!" I said, "Boy, well, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, that's I don't we talk to it. That's how me and you talk to each other. So you know, that's why I, I said, I, I said, I don't live in a ditch. Bad. I don't, I just wanted to call back in and apologize. So <laughs> that's not how I. Actually, I want to be on the air. I, actually, that gives the show a lot of character. So yeah, it's pretty yes. cool. I mean, it was. Uh, it's it only was funny. Tell. It was awesome. It was yeah. all in jest yep. of the humor of the show. So you're perfectly <laughs> yeah. fine, brother. You're perfectly fine. Okay, I just especially I was just for making sure. Chance. I just wanted to apologize though to all the children and kids out there that was listening. They're over eighteen. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> all right, Brian. Appreciate the call, Thank buddy. You, no, I, I I really I really enjoyed y'all. I've listened to quite a when I can. When I'm not fixing what I've had to fix this year, <laughs> yeah. it's been a hellacious season. Yes. Uh, 
but I, I've enjoyed y'all's podcast. It's been great. Uh, Justin, he's awesome. He's always gave great stats. Absolutely. Uh, Chris, you know, I love you, brother. Doc Love, I never met you, but love to. Well, <laughs> next time Lots of love. we're around we'll, in, in we'll the same to... area, we'll, yeah. uh, but we're, we're coming with bells on this weekend. We're not giving up. Yes, sir. Uh, probably tear the hell out of it again, but <laughs> guess what? We don't care. Well, buddy, I, I know you, uh, I've known you for many years. I know you never give up. You, you may sound like you give in, you give out or whatever, but you're, you're that racer. You're that racer that everybody loves. Yeah. That's why they call you the people's champ because you never, ever give up. Well, it's, I'm about to the point. <laughs> <laughs> 47, dude, it, it's been rough, man. This year, I I was really hoping for uh, uh, a stellar season and it, it's it's not been whatsoever. It don't matter what I try to do. It just seems like we're we're in somebody else's mess all the time. But yes. hopefully we can uh, we can end the season on a positive note. And and I I I ain't promising next year, but maybe maybe so. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, say this: forty seven. Come on now, your daddy is the oldest winning driver ever. And you're 47, and yeah. when he won, he was 61 years old. So you can't yeah. you can't tell me 47. You're gonna give you're gonna give it up. Come on now. I, well, I know I, you're not going to. My, I, my dad worked his butt off. Yes, his whole life. Yep. I, I ain't gonna lie about that. My dad's my hero. Yes. Other than Paul Rafford, he's everybody's but, hero. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, he he had a he had an old lady my mama yep that that took care of a lot of stuff and i'm i'm having to take care of it by myself you know he, yeah he worked 12 hours a day i'm working not quite as much but you put a race car and cleaning the house keeping kids fed and mowing the yard i mean you just add all that little stuff in yep dad did a lot for me and i owe it all to him but uh he had a lot of help from my mama, and I don't have that. <laughs> yep. So it, it, it does. It wears me out. And that's what people don't understand. Oh, you yeah, know, da, da, da. But uh, it's rough, and yep. it's wore me out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame uh, you. I think it's made, I think I feel older. My daddy, my dad's a young, 70 some years old. <laughs> uh, and I feel like I'm right there with him right now. <laughs> and I owe it all to Bowman Gray Stadium. <laughs> there you go. Yes, sir. There you go. Well, well Brian, uh, I'll be stopping. Hey, by. good luck to everybody this weekend. No, no, yes, no crap. Uh, I wish them all luck, uh, especially myself. Uh, I bought <laughs> two horseshoes. Uh, I bought <laughs> some lottery. I did, mean, did you get y'all the wish uh, me some luck? I just want to finish the race. I don't care where I finish. I just want to take check, check a flag without tearing the hell hell out of it, you know. Yeah. But uh, uh, make sure you paint those no, horses. Good luck, to everybody. Life is good. Yes, sir. As my daddy would say. Always. And, uh, y'all have a great one. Thank you for calling, Brian. Thank Appreciate you, it. Hey, man. All right, that was Brian Wall, and I believe we got another caller. They're waiting on hold. And go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Hey, you guys. Y'all hear me? Yeah. Is this Blaine Curry? This is Blaine Curry. Man, I appreciate the call, man. Uh, congratulations. We just announced on here, Justin Mincy did, actually, that you are pretty much, not pretty much, you are going to be the 2022 Rookie of the Year at Bowman Gray Stadium in the Stadium Stock Division, and that's that's a pretty big deal, my friend. Yeah. Um, I, I seem to think so, too. Uh We've worked hard for it. Um, it hasn't really been easy. You know, we've had a few issues. Um, yeah. uh, we've had a few not great races this year, but for the most part, I've tried to make the best out of what uh, the cards I've had dealt. Um, yeah. So, I it's a uh, it actually means a little bit to me. It means a lot to me actually because yeah. um, it's something Dad was never able to do. Uh, Dad done a <laughs> lot, but he uh in 1992 he messed up and ran too many races so he couldn't run for uh 
rookie of the year the yep. next year when he ran full time ninety three. That's right. Finished yeah, second in points, six race. But he, uh, I think he ran six races. You can only run five. Yep. Um, yep. So last year, last year I ran four. Yep. Um, That's right. And he, he helped me out as much as I could uh, with that. You know, give me a little bit of experience before I you know, actually started my rookie year. Yeah. So Blaine, let me ask you real quick, man. Uh, before the last race of the season, um, in your opinion, let's talk about race one, the track surface versus last week, the track surface. What would you? What kind of changes has happened, and are you happy with where it's at right now? Um, I've definitely gotten more used to it. Um, it's not, I. I didn't really get as many laps on it as a lot of other people that I'm racing with had on it on the, on the old track. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do know it was smoother before it's a little bit rougher now. Um, yep. which it, it's made a little bit of a difference. Um, not too much in the setup of the car, but the way you kind of drive it, maybe it's made a little bit of a difference. Um, I, at the beginning of the season, you know, the outside really wasn't, that good yeah. um it took i mean i want to say it was probably june before people started getting fairly comfortable out there running it i mean there's some people would jump out there but they, they couldn't really go nowhere yeah um but it's come around um it's definitely gotten better um i think the track's still you know not perfect uh it's still got a few bumps in it and th those won't go away but um I think, I think it's maybe, maybe I'm just getting used to it now, but I don't feel it as much as I did before, but that might, that might be just cause I'm getting used to it now. Are you happy with jumping on that outside and, and going for it? I I don't mind it. Um, you just, it, it depends, um, who you're running with. I, I try my best to run everybody as hard as I can, but you got to If you're running against, um, uh, some of the quick guys in our division, if you don't hit the outside perfect, you don't, it's going to be hard to run with them. But they're, I mean, if they slip up, if you can pinch them down and hold them down to the inside, you got a good chance. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't mind jumping to the outside. It don't bother me a bit. He ain't skirt. No, not at all. No. Well, Blaine, uh, like I said, man, it's really cool that you called in and some people was actually are under the, actually, uh, Jimmy Absher, just Blaine is my hero <laughs> wanting to hear from you. But what I, what I want you to do now, Blaine, is I want you to take this opportunity and thank everybody involved with your racing and this year and that's worked on the car, friends, family, neighbors, whoever. Take this opportunity, man, to to thank sponsors and everybody involved. Um. Well, uh, I got to start with my dad. So, uh, of course, he. I mean, he's the mastermind behind behind this whole operation. I'm. I'm learning as much as I can. Um, I've definitely come a long way. You know, I haven't been in racing too long. Uh, funny story. Dad actually tried to keep me away from it as much as for, for as long as he could. And then <laughs> when I stopped playing baseball, it is inevitable that this is what I was going to end up doing. Um, yep. but yeah, dad's the mastermind behind all of it. You know, him and him and Chuck, they, uh, you know, they, they the, they're the brains behind the fabrication and and how the car comes together because you know we we built this car last year and um so uh chuck done all the interior work he's he's real good with uh interior work and and they we all they help or i helped them hang the body and stuff like that and i helped it out as much as i could um and so I got to thank dad for sure. Um, he, he works his butt off. I mean, Sunday morning, um, it was, it was, I don't know, six, seven o'clock in the morning. And he was out there and eight, eight o'clock, I get out of bed, walk out there and he's got the car on, on jack stands already getting ready to pull the motor out. Um, you know, just, he works his butt off and he had the motor sitting back in it at, you know, five o'clock that night that afternoon so um wasn't for him i i wouldn't be nowhere near where i am but uh i gotta thank dad uh 
Chuck Wall. Um, he's helped me out a bunch. He let me run his car last year. Uh, Brandon Brindle, Brandon's helped me out a bunch. He He's let me borrow his truck, trailer. Um, he gives me guidance a lot. Um, I've got a good support group when it comes to comes to my racing, so I I can't be uh, thankful enough for that. Um, and I'd uh, I guess I'll I thank my sponsors too. Uh, Absolutely, Greg Butcher Trucking. He he uh, he does a lot. He does a lot for me. Um, he's a, he's a good guy, and he he like he enjoys giving back. So I, I'm thankful for him and everything he's done. Um, Lindley Plumbing, Lori and Kevin Neal, they're, they're great people. Yes. They they helped me out a ton, and I couldn't thank them enough. Uh, Birds Excavation, um, Wayland General Enterprises, uh, Todd Barnhart with Infinity Insurance, um, Everhart Lawn Care, and uh, SAS Seating. Those they're all great people. Um, they do a great job at what they do, and and um, I can't thank them enough for helping me out. Kyler Staley says that Blaine Curry blew my doors off on the outside one race. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. Blaine, man, I, I hope you will join us on September the 6th, man. Uh, we're going to have another live season finale, season preview at tea time. Um, I, and I've said this, and I'm real adamant about it. I want all of y'all to come, whether you finish rookie of the year or finish 13th or 29th in points i want as many of y'all that can come and be a part of this we've been having really a good time with these things at tea time these live podcast shows that that we do so i i hope that you can join us on september the 6th and and be a part of that man i'd love to have you on buddy thank you i will see what i can do i know we race it uh i'll be down at carteret that weekend with the mini stock challenge That's um right. so i will try my best to see what i can do well, look, I'm going to be at Carteret too, but I'm going to be there at tea time on Tuesday. I'm going to be at Carteret also. So, yeah, and so you're going to do the mini stop. That's on Sunday, the 4th, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Man, I'd love to interview um, I'd love to interview in, you in Victory Lane, my friend. Yes. That'd be cool if you won that. And Dad in Victory Lane, too. Interview your Dad, too. Yeah. Yeah. That would, that <laughs> yeah. would, that would be awesome. That'd be something else. Uh, I've never ran a mini stock challenge race, I don't think. I don't think I have. I've ran with the guys a bunch, but yeah, or a little, a, a little bit, but I've never ran a mini stock challenge race. If I can, if I can go down there and, and pull one off, that'd be that'd be pretty amazing. <laughs> that would be good. It's a it's a cool track, man. You're gonna love it. Just just make sure I think you, so. Just make sure you join me at uh, Riptides, and you'll everything will be good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's a good place. A day in a Say again. You tell me a day and a time. Oh, I will, buddy. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Blaine. We wish you the best, man, this weekend. And can, once again, congratulations to your sponsors, your team, everybody involved, to the to Lori Neal, Kevin Neal, and what they do for you. Uh, yeah. That's a big deal to me to get a rookie of the year, no matter what division, at Bowling Gray Stadium, man. So proud of you, my friend. Congratulations. And we'll see you this Saturday. Wishing you the best of luck, bud. Thank you, sir. You're more than welcome. That was Blaine Curry. Appreciate the call from him here at Talking Circles. My name's Chris Carter. His name's Justin Mincy. Doc Love's over there. He's my producer, and we're going to take another quick break. We're going to come back, and we're going to round everything up and let Justin maybe throw some things out there that we didn't know, and uh, we're going to call it a night. Don't go nowhere. We're not calling it a night yet. We're going to commercial break. Stay right there. Hey, Jessica Absher. What up? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> This segment is brought to you by Smokey Dave's Barbecue, located in Roxboro, North Carolina. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to Smokey Dave's. It's so good to see you. Come on in. Come on in. Smokey Dave's Barbecue has a full menu with lots of choices from hamburgers, hot dogs, to all your favorite sides. Of course, they've got beautiful barbecue chicken, mouth-watering tender brisket, full racks of ribs, and of course, pulled pork barbecue. 
Smoky Days Barbecue is a family-owned restaurant ready to serve you and your family. Set with an atmosphere for dining at any time. Plus, they cater as well. Ah, look at that plate of goodness. Can't you just smell the flavor? Dave is also a member of Operation Barbecue Relief, feeding entire communities all across the country in the wake of disasters. Smoky Dave's Barbecue, located 1039 North Madison Boulevard, Roxborough, North Carolina. I'm Doc Love, and both my bellies approve of Smoky Dave's Barbecue. This is Kyle Larson, and you watching Race 22 Radio. Ain't funny no more, is it? I have no words that could possibly explain how much I appreciate everybody that tunes in to this podcast i'm so thankful and blessed honored whatever the words could be i don't have enough words to possibly explain how much i appreciate all of you uh this thing when i started this and i was a guest on dot love show and i said man i want to this is not I've, I've had radio shows i've had two tv shows and it it's i've never had nothing to take off like this has and I, I, I pre the Bowman gray people and that y'all got to remember, I am on the outside looking in all y'all. It's been around for a long time. You know, yep. that daggum Kale Gill. I will never yep. forget when Kale moved up here, Carter, you've <laughs> got to Google Bowman gray. Just go to YouTube, Carter. You've yep. got to see what these people are doing. Yep. So, and I come up here and I said, this is my kind of race. <laughs> I should have been here 20 years ago when I was in my prime being a real redneck, but it's, it's really the, for me to be able to have the, a podcast. And, and we all know that, that 90% of my podcast focuses on Bowman gray. I, when yep. I told Dot love, when I said, man, I want to, I want to cover this and cover it, you know, as much as possible. Yep. But at the same time that none of this is possible with all of y'all that's watching and listening and, and Doc Love will tell you the numbers that we are getting now, man, it's just been, woohoo, they're up there. Blowing my mind. And it's, I'm just so thrilled for you because um, once we got together and that chemistry, it was just natural. And um, and I knew it was going to be successful. I really did. And, I, and, and this is a void that I've said needed to be filled because nobody's talking about the ins and outs of what's really going on with Bowman Gray. Yep. And, and I'm shocked that that had happened. It has not. And and some even uh, I, th I think it was Randy Smith. It was like you I mean Randy was talking a couple of weeks ago. It's like man, yep. why? And I hey, I'm glad y'all didn't. <laughs> <I'm> glad, <laughs> you know, it's my baby now, huh? That's <laughs> so, right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but and, and uh, once again, uh, while I'm trying to say, Jonathan Langham, I see you. I love you too, but you, I love you, Jonathan. I'll see you when you come up to North Wilkes for uh, one of my buddies from Mobile again. But it's it's my sponsors that's a part of this dot love people like you that are providing stats. So I, I don't even have the words to properly say thank you for the support and everything. And I'm, I hate the seasons ending this. <laughs> I do. Well, I, it's like, but, and I, I get it. There's a good part and a bad part. So now, you yeah. know, on the Saturdays that I'm not announcing, I'm like, what the hell am we going to do now? I want to go. <laughs> I've got to get to a dirt track. I mean, yes. and well, now that we talked about last week, we got to find another one now. <laughs> and, and you know what's weird about friendship, yes. it, Justin, and you was watching it, is yep. I was talking about how much I love the track, how well they're doing. Yes. Yep. And I get it. I, I get it. I've done read some really good. I've read some really good. Re actually people that has a brain and people that should be allowed internet access that yep. has spoken on this subject in the dirt world. And what I'm talking about for those of y'all that are watching this, I know this is about Bowman Gray, but we're going to touch on this for just a second yep. is that friendship speedway, a dirt track, beautiful facility. It depends on who you listen to or whatever, you know, once again, my side, your side, the truth mm -hmm. uh, are, is now done for the year and they're blaming it on the, jack legs and all you people that are yep. idiots that get on the internet that shouldn't be allowed on the internet yep that and the the, the back to, I, I i get it 
but I also get you got to have thick skin to be. I was GM yep. Graham Moore was on here at the Sunny South Raceway, Montgomery Speedway, Carteret County Speedway. There's three tracks that I've been in a manager capacity and a promoter. So when I talk about this real quick, I get it. Okay, once again, yep. been there, done that. Yep. You got to have thick skin, and you can't let the inmates run the asylum. People, that's all there right. is to it, and it just sounds like to me. It reminds me of the University of Alabama when Mike Shula was the coach. The inmates run the asylum. He sucked, and that made Alabama suck, and I cried. Yep. So <laughs> with all that being said, at the end of the day, it's it's almost the same thing, and there's always so many sides to the story. I wish that this would not happen, but let this be a lesson to learn if any of the people that are out there happens to be watching this podcast. You, you got to remember what you say when you get on that Internet because yep. when we don't have a track to race at because of some dumbass with a smart mouth, then that's that's part of the problem. I hate to that's be so right. brash about it, but it's no, just the truth, no, yeah, and that truth. that's a big problem. And it another is. part of that was the abuse at the track. You know, yes. to track officials of uh, uh, you know the racers not doing what they're supposed to do. I mean, simple, yep. common things. And I'm and I'm I'm, I'm guarantee you they're burnt out and tore up about having to deal with it and, and basically, you know, babysitting. Yep. Uh, a much. lot of times. And, and see, and, and I'm not saying it's all the drivers, but no, it's not. I no, really some... read into what they're saying. And, you know, the people, the way the, the public treats the employees. Um, and but you got it. Once again, you're right. You put your foot down. Yeah. Yep. Boy, you ain't talking to me like that. Are you yep. no, are you That's this? Right. You're not the boss. That's true. Exactly. You got me sadly mistaken. If you think yep. you're going to talk to me and I'm running this racetrack like That's that. Right. No boy. Yeah, boy. I said boy. <laughs> exactly. You got to say I it. said yep. boy. That's I right. heard you. I heard yep. you. I'll take the radio off and hit him in the head with it. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it, but it, at the end of the day, and it start. you know, the track was bad the last race. And, it, you know, okay, well, they had the track wasn't like to their liking. It's a dirt track. But it's you know? the same for everybody. It's, it's everybody. A, right. You, got, you have to you adapt. You got to remember that and adapt. And then you got, well, it's not like that. If you go to Tony Stewart's track, well, okay, well, you got Tony Stewart that fixing the track. So yeah, Tony's and, doing it. Once again, guys, we could we could nitpick, split hairs about all yep. this. But the main thing I wanted to say is I joke around a lot about idiots on the internet, but this has a lot to do with it. Yep, you know, it you does. keep bashing a track. Okay. It was a bad night. Gray Garrison did this. Gray Garrison yep. done that. Gray Garrison loves that person. Gray don't like that person. Yep. But y'all still going and running your mouth about it. There you go. So, but at the end of the day, hey, what do I know? You know, but I, I, I hate that friendship is uh, done for the year. Um, I don't know if it's for sale, for lease, for rent, or whatever. They Maybe. said they were going to uh, have a release on what would be available. You know, yeah. the rest of the year, I think they can rent it. Um, they might yeah. rent it to someone. I don't know if that meant for someone else to promote it. Yeah, but um, but yeah, it's unfortunate. <laughs> I think it's something. There you go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna announce the second annual Red Dirt <laughs> Rumble. <laughs> Me and Johnny. <laughs> hey, there we go. Well, I mean, breaking Mike, news. Mike, Mike, Mike Fult uh put up there that he has 311 for sale for yep. four million dollars. Yep. And and I've announced at three eleven. Hey, does all those cars in in the grass come with it? Hell no. That's a good price. <laughs> yeah. If all those banger. cars come with it, and bang banger division, just like Weber Valley. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? Here's the thing: if somebody was to walk up to Mike Fulton tomorrow morning with four million dollars cash money in seven briefcases, he'd say, "I'm just picking." Yep. Yeah. That's what would yep. happen there. That's what. So I mean. friendship goes, not goes under. That's not the right word. No. Friendship shuts the doors. And then Mike Fult posted three elevens for sale for four million dollars. So anyway, I, I love my dirt racing. Talk about stirring the pot there. That, that's yeah. just what Mike Fult likes to do, and Always. he's really good at it. But you Always. know what? I like Mike Fult. Mike Fult was very good to me. Y'all know the story. When I come out of the coma, I wanted to announce again, but I couldn't yeah. announce because my words wouldn't come out right. I'd I'd call that driver, the other driver, and I'd put it to you this way: if I'd sit, when I went to Careway of Miss Renee let me come back and i'd see them three wide going into one and by the time i got it out of my mouth it was in turn four so yep. i struggled with that mike Fult let me come back and after a lot of practice watching youtube and stuff he let me come back and announce at 311 and the rest is history because i met so many good people in the dirt world that i still consider a good friend so yep. all right well there you go enough of that so friendship i hate it uh maybe something good to come out of this 
Uh, Jimmy Absher says, my first one viewed. Man, that breaks my heart. This is the first one he's viewed. <laughs> Thank you for the kind <laughs> words. Though. I really appreciate Thanks, it. Sir. Uh, Justin Mincy, um, we we have had a blast with you being here. Um, this Bowman Gray stuff, your knowledge, just like, you know, did you hear him a while ago, Dot Love? He said, I got my Carteret County Speedway notes. Yeah, I caught that. So, yes. yeah, so we can, we can, if we was to say, okay, 1993, lap 17, who was leading at Caraway, Justin? He'd give him about three minutes and he's going to tell us. So it's, yep. it's been really, and we yep. pretty much have covered every scenario for the champions, Yep. for rookie of the year. And, yep. and then once again, rookie of the year, Riley Neal settled. Yep. For the sportsman. Congratulations. Yep. yep. Very Blaine nice. Curry, who just called in. Congratulations. Yep. Settled. Yep. So we got Junior Snow, the number 51 in the modified. Yep. Settled. So the rookie of the That's year correct. battle is going to be very, very interesting between Austin Jones, Jones and, and Blaine Curry. I nope. mean, uh, Brian Sykes, Brian Sykes Jr. Jr. See that damn brain injury? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. I try to wing a lot of this stuff and I know better, <laughs> but then I go to take notes and I get aggravated and pissed off. So yeah. that, I throw them up in the air. But <laughs> before we leave, before we close up, yep. one more time, just go over where the points leaders must finish no matter what everybody else does. So yeah, start with the, the viewers stops. and folks going to the track. When they see that leader, they'll kind of have a, a an idea. Oh gosh, if he needs to be up there, if he wants to win, but you yep. know, if he's not in that position, that's when it's getting exciting. Yeah. What's that magic number? Yeah. The magic to? number. There you go. See AJ Sanders to win his third championship has to finish sixth place. Sixth place or better to win his third championship. Okay. So six is his magic number. Yep. And Billy Gregg in the street stock, same number. Sixth place or better to finish in front of his son to win his record-breaking fourth championship. Good luck to the Gregg family on that. Let's see. Tommy Neal has to finish seventh. He has to finish seventh place. No matter where Justin finishes or Zach finishes, he just has to finish seventh place or better. And we all know Tommy can come to the front, so right. we'll, we'll pay attention to that, And especially with the qualifying and the redraw. And the biggest one of them all, Tim Brown, to possibly win his unprecedented 12th championship, the most in Bowling Gray Stadium history yeah. in every single division, all eight divisions ever. He needs to finish a tight one. He needs to finish third place. Third place or better. That's a taller task. That is a very tall task for a guy who has not struggled. According to us, he's not struggled because he's relied on consistency. Right. But if you ask him, <laughs> exactly, it's been a struggle. It's been it's been my worst season ever. Right. So right. that blows me away. Third yeah. to win his twelfth championship. Yeah. So there you go. Yep. That's that's so. You know, you sit here and think about it. Third or better. Ugh, you know. That, that's but he's only finished outside of the top ten one time in sixteen races. That's correct. But wow. You know, he needs a top five. <laughs> yep. So yeah. Yeah, yes. a little better than that top five. So that's man, Brandon Ward. I just uh, Shane Mills on there, and he bat out said he really wants uh, yeah, Brandon, Brandon to win yeah. it. So, yes. And Brandon. Well, we could talk for days. About <laughs> oh, we can do a whole new, yeah, another couple such hours. Good people good love yep. him. Everybody involved on that team. All right. So, what I want to do before we sign off, real quick, I want y'all to know that here is our latest update from Emma's Army. Little Emma Brooks, nine years old with leukemia. Uh, she's due for another lumbar puncture this Friday. No, uh, and I'm reading from the Facebook page. Okay, so yep. the, she's due for another, and this is a two day old post. Okay, yep. she's due for another lumbar puncture this Friday. The infection risk of all the transfusion transfusions she has needed every few days lately. The chemo treatments and the skin issues, on top of having a an A and C at zero. And basically, no white blood cells. It's just a scary combination. Oh, wow. So not sleeping much, praying a lot, and just trying to keep her mind, body, and spirit strong so she can continue to fight. Reminding her of all the things life has in store for her once she whips this imposter. I'll update again when I have any better info and a plan for what comes next for our sweet Emma. Right now, we're taking it one day at a time. Until then, good night from room 912 again. 
Um, <clears throat> that's great. That that that's uh. As you see a picture of little Emma. Yeah, it's a beautiful yeah. picture of her. But yeah. it's just you know that's so I can't. Could y'all imagine? I mean, yeah. And it's it's I am on a mission that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use my platform as many times as I can for and you know for people to be able to know about what's going on with Emma and this yep. family. Once again, we're going to do our Bowman Gray season roundup live at tea time on September the 6th. We will have a helmet out. If y'all want to once again contribute, we, we, we raised $3,000, $2,900 yep. the next yep. day. Mm -hmm. Johnny Tilly said, no, yep. we're going to make it 3000 mm -hmm. But what I'm saying, y'all, three that just $3,000 in four hours. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty good. And I had a goal. I was like, please, Lord, let us get 1000 so yes. I'm, I mean, if we yeah, could do, that's what we were thinking yes. going in. Yeah, man, yes. wouldn't it be awesome if we could do yeah. a, a thousand? Just get a thousand. Wow, so it, it just was, blows your mind. It my was goal, amazing. my goal is 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 I'd like to really try to get another thousand on September the sixth to help this family. We're in the talks with Mike Brown at the Brown Compound, but yes. on a, a having some really neat stuff and to help that family. But most importantly, y'all, we all joke and jank and and yeah. have a. Um, cuss word or two slips out every now and then <laughs> yeah but Drywall. if you if you pray y'all please remember emma brooks and her family in your yes. prayers there's power no, in prayer there's nothing folks. more exactly. important there and we, we've seen what bubbo brown's went through and coming yes. back i've seen people come from so many hell look i mean look at what shane mill you know yes. and and, yeah. and i'll even use myself as an example I, my friends told me that i might wake up i might not right. yeah so here i, I am look, so the, the power of prayer is amazing so y'all, please, please, please keep this this family. Damn it! <laughs> now, keep just, them in your prayers. I understand. I understand. Keep, keep this family. In pray your for strength, and we pray for uh, their, her care team. Yeah, pray for yes. you everybody, know, involved. everybody. Everybody involved. Everybody involved. It bothers me to know. It. I've never met the family. I've never right. met. Yeah. I've never. We even need met to try them. whenever she gets to feeling better and can have visitors. We need yes. to, to plan to go over there one evening. Yeah, absolutely. But her family knows and Emma knows that the support group at Bowman Gray Stadium, this racing family and everything, they know what we're doing and everything, and that baby yes. knows. So <clears throat> thank you to every one of y'all that has uh, helped with this. And once again, yes. I don't care if you've given a dollar, a thousand, or a hundred. Yes, it, it does Your matter. prayers is what matters the yeah. most. Exactly. So, whew. Yeah, I understand. I mean, uh, I've lost the, uh, I've lost a family due to cancer. It's it's not fun. No, it's it's, it's not. It's just a that's child the worst thing ever. It's a child, and you know, you think about this is is the the thoughts and everything that you know. You how do you tell a nine year old with cancer? Yes, that Jesus loves her, and and mm -hmm. you know, and that we love her and everything, and she's going through so much. Yep, so much uh, trouble and and all this, but. Once again, the the prayers means so much. Uh, just, and I, that's that. That's I, that. I, I that's, gotta say, I gotta say this. Uh, I mentioned the L Town mob earlier when the stadium stocks with uh, Sean Hayes. Mm -hmm. Um, he made his first appearance last week in that camouflage forty nine. Um, deal. his his daughter Joe uh, Joe, they had for a long time. They they had a. a I, I can't I can't say without getting choked up either, but um Joe, she was fighting cancer too mm -hmm. at, at the age of nine or ten. Yeah. And it was so horrible to, yeah. to see yeah. that. And every single time she would she would there would be an update from Sean or Missy, I would pay attention to it. I mean, I pay attention to that family and and uh, just seeing them every single week, the the updates, it was just so remarkable that joe was so strong she was so oh, positive yeah, every yeah. single day emma's she did a, not a, a warrior i'm telling you i mean it was she just last fighter. week she was in the they put her in the, little the pool, pool and, and then, then she yeah. gets up shaking little, her little booty <laughs> yeah, dances, so. got to see your little dance <laughs> and, and look and, and people's heard me say this time and time again doc has and i'll yep. break down and start crying sometimes about it yep. but you know the reason i guess is 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 you don't supposed you to bury your kids and stuff, and yep. I've had to do it twice. I've had yes. I've, I've had the experience the loss of both kids. Yes. So when I when all this stuff it me it it's from the heart. Yes. I mean it yep. with every you wear your heart in, on your chest, my body. That it's important to me that uh we all come together and pray for that's this why, child. That's why you're so special to the racing community. 
<laughs> because you wear your heart on your sleeves all yep. the time, well, I, and I, you show your passion for I the do. sport. I love all it. Time. I love it. I eat, breathe, live it. It's it's what I live for. But uh, Jessica, I see you there. Uh, Jessica, praying for Emma. Jessica Acosta, thank you for sharing posts and everything that you do. Uh, but look, man, this has been one heck of a good show, man. <laughs> yes. You're, Justin Mincy, I'm, I'm, I'm proud We're gonna of you. We're going to do this more often, Justin. Yeah, you yes, sir. definitely. I'm, I'm proud of you. <laughs> I, your knowledge amazes me. What you do is what people used to say about me 10 years ago with football and stuff, because I used <laughs> to be able to do that. But, but yep. you know, somebody, I talked to Matthew on the phone today, and yes. we talked about you. And, and oh, just, Lord. No, it was all good. Matthew loves <laughs> yeah. you, man. I love and, Matthew. And, uh, yeah. I know y'all got a bro date coming up too. So, oh uh, yes, uh -huh. oh, oh yeah. I know about that. But <laughs> that's going to be cool. I'm glad you, you guys get to do that. It's uh, I, I have the utmost respect and admiration for you and your knowledge and what you do, not just for us here at Race Twenty Two, for what you do for Bowman Gray Stadium, yeah. Flow Racing, for racing. Period. So everybody that yeah. you know, like I said, you got Carteret County <laughs> Speedway <laughs> results in there. But, uh, man, thank you for being a part of this show, well, Justin. I really do appreciate and, it. And to tell you, um, I've got – this This might blow your mind. I've got Bowman Gray Stadium, Caraway Speedway. Yeah, I figured Caraway. Ace Speedway, Carteret County, and and I've got Hickory, too. Nice. I'm, wor I'm working time. on Hickory, too. Nice. That's good it's, stuff, man. It, this is not – that everybody thinks that it's a paying gig. It's like – it, you do it for the love of it. My I, I friend. do it for the love yeah. of it. And I just want to say it. We, we can talk about it later on another podcast, but I got my start 16 years ago doing it for Bowman Gray, not for Bowman Gray, just yeah. for the love of it. And mm -hmm. my mom, who's passed away due to cancer, she's the one who kickstarted it. There you go. And it's kept me, her, her will and determination to help me become a, a better person is what's kept me doing this. And to try to be a better person with, with trying to get the stats accurate, trying to get the numbers accurate, double check, triple check. It's been amazing. And I'm so glad to have this platform with Matthew Dillner and Flo Racing and have you guys, Doc, Chris, for having me on here tonight. Thank you very much. It's been amazing. Uh, I've had a lot of fun. This has been it's it's blast. been very so, fun. So this is uh so this is someone you know, Miss Tammy Reynolds Mincy, praying for Emma oh, and her family. Yes. I'm so proud of you, Justin. I'm glad you are finally getting appreciation for something you have been working on for so long. Love you. Yep. That's awesome, and we love you too. And you know, the last couple of shows, I, I didn't see you on if you was watching. <laughs> I don't know if you was. I don't think you were because I didn't get a comment. But I yes. that's not love. I went. <laughs> I was looking at stuff. I had this phone up here, and I went, "If I only had that damn Justin Mincy's phone number, I just go, Ding. hey Justin, this is Chris. I need your help." But you know, and I, I have said that more than once on yes, here. But man, yes. you will be on here more often than you. If absolutely, I want to, I want to help make sure you get the love that you deserve because yes, I've said it three times. I'm gonna oh, say it four more or one more. Your yes. your ability to do this is 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 amazing, and thank you. I can see you. If you can, this is what you do. Once again, you're talking to a former drug addict. Okay, <laughs> yes. listen. You're talking to a former drug yes. addict. You're talking to someone that was in a coma that was told I wouldn't walk right. The sky's the limit. Anything that you put your mind to, you can do. And that's for anybody listening. This is the truth. Y'all know that. I'm preaching to the choir with all yes. you. Do. But at the end of the it's day, great. I see you in a NASCAR capacity in a couple of years from now and with the people like Matthew Dillner and you surround yourself with all these good people and keep being yes. on these podcasts, not just this one on docs on the whoever's yes. And providing this stuff, man, you, you, the sky's the limit for you, brother. Now I mean Thank that with sir. all my heart. Thank and speaking you, of appreciation, everybody, I don't say how much I love y'all, uh, not love you, but I really love these people that makes this show possible. And this is Talking Circles with Chris Carter. And it is brought to you by Squeaky Clean Express, Mobile Detailing Service, Jordan Atkins and Winston-Salem. My great friends that I love to death, H&H &H Auto Repair, Philip Harrison, Daniel Harrison, Doug Thompson, and Tyler Hill. They're on Kernersville Road in Winston-Salem. Appreciate them. Midway Embroidery and more, Charlene Robertson. She's been doing a lot of hats. For these drivers, y'all need these shirts embroidered. She does stuff for Dot Love. Yeah, she's doing a lot of stuff. For so many teams, too, so Chase yeah. Robertson, yes. all these teams and everything. So Charlene is is them doing love some her work. She's awesome she's, work. She's making so, us look good. Yes, absolutely. She, I think she the, that one job it, it made me look slimmer. 
<laughs> what? What the hell did you just say? Doc where Lemon do I get Slimmer. one? Of, where do I get one of these shirts? At? I, I need I need about three of them. So I wear two sizes. Direction. I wear two sizes bigger just so I don't look. Yeah, belly. yeah. Be like, hey, Doc, looks like you're losing weight. No, I just bought a bigger shirt. There you go. Make yourself look good. <laughs> Midway Embroidery and More at Old US Fifty Two at Midway Town Center, Suite Nine. And her husband, that mad man, the one and only Brian Robertson, drives the number 72 street stock at Bowman Gray Stadium. That's right. Turn and, burn, turn and Burn Hobby and Raceway, Midway Town Center, Suite 10. That's in Winston-Salem. Got a new dirt track. Yep, sure do. And they had a great turnout tonight. They're going to have a big race we are going to talk about on our next podcast yep. that they're going to have on the 27th. It's paying pretty Fantastic. good money, too. So, also, my sponsor is Miesmer Ushery Racing and driver development. Great friends of mine. Appreciate what they do. And my old buddy, Terry Freeman and Jennifer, Miss Jennifer Freeman. They're on East Sprague Street, Grillville in Winston-Salem. Also, Smoky Days Barbecue, David Birch in Roxboro. Velocity USA Premium Motorsports Apparel, Brad Smith, Lexington USA, Velocity USA. Big shout out to my good buddy, Tiffany Howe at Tea Time, Burke Street yes. Pub. Y'all, we're going to have Thank a you. final grand finale of the bowman Gree stadium he will be there yep. matthew dillner will be there <laughs> awesome yep. jonathan we'll be there. brown will be there i promise i've already yep. discussed that i was going to have him better. on last week and he i better. said jonathan we'll have, saving you yeah we, we <laughs> promise every time we go there if we have to go and get him ourselves we will go do that and then start live when we get there jonathan brown will you be know where there. he lives so <laughs> yeah. go grab him he, but he will be he will be the on there so anyway that's september the 6th we will be at live at tea time but we'll be right back talking circles with chris carter next tuesday night seven o'clock right here where you're watching that thank you so much for everybody for your support i hope to see all of y'all at bowman, bowman gray stadium, stadium. y'all yes, can sir. go hang out with me and michael adams at tea times afterwards <laughs> i promise <laughs> dot love will be usually he comes in with us and we're gonna have a well, i'll be at south boston Okay, so, we'll scratch that. The, but anyway, the fans of Aww. Virginia, come hang out with us. Yeah, I wish. See, Doc I really Love. wish I'd be there at the uh, the last race um, up on the uh, the balcony or whatever it is yes. that Tiffany's got. Man, ah, man, I hate to miss that. But we got some exciting things going on at Bowman or uh, South Boston Speedway. We're celebrating sixty five years of racing. At That's amazing. South Boston Speedway. Um, Great and I job know, uh, to that crew. Up Joshua there. Weatherman and Billy's going to be up there covering. Yep. The races for race 22 and uh, we got a lot of cool things um i've been doing a lot of research about what happened uh in 1957 so we're gonna have some <laughs> trivia we're gonna have some fun with that so um it's gonna be some good racing we got twin 65s for the late model stocks budweiser limited uh sportsman six twin 65s no 65 lap race south side disposable pure stocks 25 the uh, virginia state police heat hornets 20 laps and we got the East Coast Flathead. So we're going to be talking a lot yes. of history that, that you know, racing with the South Boston Speedway. And it's going to be like watching history right in front of you mm -hmm. with the East Coast Flathead Ford uh, Racing Association. 25 laps for those guys and gals. Uh, and we're going to have fireworks. Uh, we had um, cool deal. Uh, a deal awesome. that happened beyond our control that uh, the 4th of July fireworks didn't happen. Not to the track's fault. Uh, they will make up for it uh, this coming weekend, the Saturday night fireworks. So bring the family. Come hang out with us. Doc Love, Ken Childs yep. will be out there. Kyle Haney will be in the booth with me. So we're going to have a good time. It's going to be a good time at South uh, South Boston Speedway. No doubt about it, a good time at South Boston Speedway. But we are also going to have a great time at Bowman Gray Stadium, yep. the yes. final race of the season this Saturday night. It is double points, 150 yes. laps for our modifieds and it's going to be 40 laps for our sportsmen the other two divisions will have a regular show so make yep. your plans to come out whether you go into south boston speedway whether you're coming to come over and join us at bowman gray stadium support your local racetrack no people. matter where it's get out at. there yes. and support them no so matter if it's east coast west coast midwest support your support local, your racetrack. local racetrack asphalt or dirt at you the track and, and support online them. support them online, online. If rather you, go if in you person make it if you cannot make it to like virginia to south boston if you're at bowman gray tune in on flow racing and watch them there yeah. you go watch these races but what i mean tracks. by support them online is don't go on there and complain and bash don't and nitpick bash. no because i'll call you an idiot and, and that's what you are <laughs> if you do it and i'll you talk will be about you idiot i will call Carter. you out 
<laughs> you will be labeled. All right, we got to wrap this up. We are gone. I appreciate all of y'all. Thank you, Dot Love, Justin. Good to have you on. And Thank we'll see much. y'all talking Chris, circles with Chris Carter. Be on next Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. See you there. And we'll see you at Bowman Gray this Saturday night. We thank you for clicking on Talking Circles with Chris Carter on Race 22 Radio. Race 22 Radio. We hope you have enjoyed the show and hope to see you back with us next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We hope to see you at a short track in your hometown. Until then, we'll see you at the races.